Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Mamta Sharma, Organizing Secretary for the International Short Term Training Program, ISTTP2, with a chosen topic on impact and panacea of environmental pollution, the past, present, and future. Scheduled to be held from 28 to 26 April 2022, signing in from the campus of Raj Rishi Government Autonomous College, Alwar, which is popularly known as RRC. On the behalf of our patron and principal, and from the organizing committee, I welcome you all to the fourth day of ISTTP2. A smile is a universal welcome. We must welcome the future, remembering that soon it will be the past, and we must respect the past, remembering that it was once all that was humanly possible. आप सभी का इंटरनेशनल शॉर्ट फॉर्म ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में बहुत बहुत स्वागत है अभिनंदन है माँ सरस्वती ज्ञान और चेतना का प्रतिनिधित्व करती हैं, वे वेदों की जननी हैं। माँ सरस्वती को समझ ज्ञान साहित्य संगीत और कला की देवी माना जाता है माँ सरस्वती की आराधना करते हुए हम इस ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम की शुरुआत करते हैं एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन इज एन इनक्योरेबल डिजीज इट कैन ओनली बी प्रिवेंटेड Very commoners have it so well. A uh, small and fast recap from the third day of ISTTP one. It is started with the recap of the second day. After that, we had nine keynote address, which was delivered by Dr. Anupam Saxena, who is attorney and a cosmetologist from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. After that, we had our tenth keynote address, which was delivered by Dr. Kunti Gupta. Who is an associate professor in the subject zoology from LBS Kamil College, Kolkata, Rajasthan, India? After that, we had 11 keynote address, which was delivered by Dr. Aruna Chakravarti, associate professor zoology, Kamil Dubai College, Bikane, Rajasthan, India. This was then followed by 12 keynote address, which was delivered by Dr. Mandeep Kaur, head of the department psychology, Kamla Nehru College. Delhi University, New Delhi, India. This was then followed by 13 keynote address, which was delivered by Professor Dr. Hukam Singh Ji, Principal RRC Alwar, Rajasthan, India. The third day was concluded by the free forum and the feedback, which was conducted by the organizing secretary. The more we pour the big machines, the fuel, the pesticides, the herbicides, the fertilizers, and chemicals into farming, the more we knock out the mechanism that made it all work in the first place. The final principle of natural farming is no pesticides, no fertilizers. Nature is the perfect balance when left alone. And which is not happening, human intervention is everywhere, at every place, everything we see. The term pesticides cover a wide range of compounds, including insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, rodenticides, molluscicides, nematocytes, plant growth regulators, and others. Among these, organochlorines, which are popularly known as OCPs, used successfully in controlling the number of diseases such as malaria, typhus, were banned or restricted after the 1960s in most of the technologically advanced countries or the developed countries. The introduction of other synthetic insecticides such as organophosphates, popularly known as OPs, in the 1960, carbamate in 1970, and pyrethroids in 1980, and the introduction of herbicides and fungicides in 1970s and 80s decade contributed greatly to pest control and agricultural output. Ideally, a pesticide must be lethal to the target pest, but not to non-target species, including men. Unfortunately, this is not the case. So the controversy of use and abuse of pesticide has surfaced. The rampant use of these chemicals under the adage, if little is good, a lot more will be better, has played a havoc with humans and other life forms. 
the production of SNI started in India in 1952 with the establishment of a plant for the production of BHC near Calcutta. And India is now the second largest manufacturer of pesticides in Asia after China and ranks 12th globally. So we are no less in contributing in pesticide pollution. Means we are second largest in Asia and 12th in the world. The primary benefits are the consequences of the pesticide effects, the direct gains expected from their use. For example, the effect of killing caterpillars, feeding on the crop brings the primary benefit of higher yields and better quality of cabbage. Improving productivity. Tremendous benefits have been derived from the use of pesticides in forestry, public health and the domestic sphere. And of course, in agriculture, a sector upon which Indian economy is largely dependent. Food gain production, which is stood at a at a mere of 50 million tons in 1948-49 had increased almost fourfold into 198 million tons by the end of 1996 and 97 and from this estimated 169 million hectares of permanently cropped land. Protection of crop or losses or the yield production, reduction. Severe infestation of bees, particularly in the early stage of crop establishment, ultimately accounts for a yield reduction of 40%. Herbicide provided both an economic and labor benefit. Vector disease control. Vector-borne diseases are most effectively tackled by killing the vectors. Insecticides are often the only practical way to control the insects that spread deadly disease such as malaria, resulting in an estimated 5,000 deaths each day. Quality of food. In countries of the first world, it has been observed that a diet containing fresh fruit and vegetables far outweigh potential risk for eating very low residues of pesticides and crops. Increasing evidences show that eating fruit and vegetables regularly reduce the risk of many cancers high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and other chronic diseases. Transport, sport complex, and buildings. The transport sector makes extensive use of pesticides, particularly herbicides. Herbicides and insecticides are used to maintain the turf on sport pitches, cricket grounds, and the golf courses. Insecticides protect buildings and other wooden structures from damage by termites and wood boring insects. Now, in the series of environmental pollution disasters, today I would like to talk about Bahia Mayor's cyanide spill. Workers in the gold mine use cyanide to purify gold from the rocks. This is applied, for example, in Romania. At uh, 2022 hours on January 30th, 2000, cyanide used in the gold mine in Bahia Mayor overflowed into the major river, the Sumes and subsequently into the river Tisja. The cause of the spill was a break in the dam that surrounded a satellite basin. This resulted in a release of at least 100,000 cubic meters of water into the very high cyanide, with the very high cyanide concentrations. The wastewater did not only contain cyanide, but also heavy metals such as copper, zinc, and lead. Copper concentration exceeded the heavily polluted threshold 40 to 160 times, the zinc concentration was twice above the standard and lead concentration was 5 to 9 times more greater than the allowable or permissible limits. Cyanide is a very aggressive toxin that can kill people. So consequently, when Romanian authorities were notified of this spill, they immediately raised the alarm. This rapid response prevented any human victims. However, this spill did kill all the aquatic plants and animals lie for dozens of miles of downstream. How cruel we are with our fauna and flora. On February 12th, it, were, it even impacted the major European river, Danube, which receives water from Tisja. This caused the impact to be noticeable in Hungary and Serbia as well. In, uh, inhabitants of the Belgrado witnessed Danube water full of dead fishes flowing by. Up to 100 people, most of them children, have been treated in hospital after eating contaminated fish. 
the Romanian media entitled this environmental disaster the largest since the Chernobyl. Environmental organizations claim that large companies take advantage of the flexible environmental regulation in poorer countries such as Romania. It is stated that this results in the occurrence of environmental disasters such as that in Baia Mare. The major owner of Baia Mare, this gold mine, is an Australian called Brett. He commented the media coverage of the Baia Mare disaster saying, Reports were utterly exaggerated. He denies the high rate of fish mortality in the area had anything to do with the gold mine. In Serbia, the Minister of Environment has announced that he will sue the ones responsible for this spill. He demands an international trial. Fishery has been banned from the Kishja and the population was recommended not to use the water for any portable purposes. This has caused many local residents to suffer from drinking water shortages and has caused some losses in the fishing industry. So this was another human intervention to the aquatic life. Do write your views to me on envtoxicall at the rate gmail.com or Dr. Mamda at the rate envtoxicall.com. One of the first conditions of happiness is that link between man and nature should not be broken. Leo Tolstoy said it so correctly, and we all are seeing it happening today. Now it's time for our 14 keynote address, which is to be delivered by Dr. Subhash Chandra. Dr. Subhash Chandra is currently working as a professor and health department of zoology at Maharishi Dayan and Saraswati University, Ajmer, Rajasthan, India. He has an experience of 20, 30 years in teaching and research. He wrote his PhD thesis on comparative study of behavior of people, that is axis axis, samba, that is service unicolor in captivity, that is in Jaipur Zoo. And in Vail, Sariska Tiger Reserve from the Department of Zoology, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. He has an H index of 14 and item index of 17. That's very impressive. Please accept our heartiest congratulations. Five students have been awarded PhD degree under the supervision and co-supervision of Dr. Chandra. His main area of research is biodiversity conservation, natural resource conservation, biodegradation, and animal behavior. He has published more than 45 research papers in chapter journals and the books of international and national repute, and has also authored a book on Angulate Biodiversity Conservation, published by an international publisher. Dr. Chandra has participated and organized many international and national conferences, seminars, workshops, and workshops of the field, as well as worked in different projects also. He is a member of the Academic Council and convener of Board of Studies in Zoology. Dr. Chandra, Alvar se aapka bahut bahut swagat hai, abhinandan hai, aur ab bahut khush hai aapko apne bich paakar. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Now I would request you, Dr. Chandra, to start with the 14 keynote address. The stage is all yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for the introduction and good morning to all. Am I audible? Hello? Uh, yes, sir, you're audible. Okay, okay, thank you, ma'am, thank you. When I'm coming to my presentation, oh, you and go, Aapko sabhi ko dikhai de rahe hai? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a very good seminar. Students are from different disciplines. Students are there. Person from the outside country are there. So I will do my best to be bilingual. And today I am going to present on biodiversity and bio indicator animal species.
first one i'm going to biodiversity and as you all know this biodiversity term was given by w erosion in 1986 and this biodiversity encompasses the entire range of mammals birds reptiles amphibians fishes insects and other invertebrates including plants fungi other microorganisms like protista bacteria and viruses and you all know that it can be referred at three different level that is genetic variation ecosystem variation and species variation like main topic pe aane se pehle ek choti si poem hai wo aap se share karna cha raha hu एक माँ है उनकी पुकार में सुना रहा हूँ कि माँ किस तरीके से अपनी पुकार कर रही है आई लोस्ट माई चाइल्ड टूडे एक माँ कह रही है कि मेरा बच्चा खो गया है आज मेरा बच्चा जो है वो चला गया है दुनिया से आई लोस्ट माई चाइल्ड टूडे पीपल कैम टू वीप एंड क्राई लोग आ रहे हैं रो रहे हैं सांत्वना दे रहा है माँ को एंड आई जस्ट सेट एंड स्टेयर ड्राई आई माँ बैठी हुई है अपनी नम आंखों से क्योंकि माँ का बच्चा चला गया है They struggle to find words to say, to try and make the pain to go away. सभी सांतोना दे रहे हैं कि बच्चा गया है, बहुत बड़ा दुख है, लेकिन माँ है वो बहुत ज़्यादा दुखी है. Because I lost my child today. And कल सभी अपन Earth Day मना रहे थे. ये जो माँ है, this is Earth. जो child है, that is biodiversity. we have seen high mass extinctions you know in and ordovician late devonian and permian and triassic and and cretaceous aaj mass extinctions apan dekh chuke hain aur agar is tarike se biodiversity ka loss aise hi hota raha to definitely अपन देख सकते हैं अपन नहीं तो आने वाली जनरेशन निश्चित रूप से अगर ऐसा ही बायोडाइवर्सिटी का लॉस होता रहा तो एंड ऑल यू नो मे ट्वेंटी सेकेंड इज सेलिब्रेटेड एज इंटरनेशनल बायोडाइवर्सिटी डे एंड ऑल ओवर वर्ल्ड अराउंड फोर्टीन लेख नोन स्पीसीज ऑफ living animals is currently known and you know more than 50% species are covered by the insects then other animals higher plants and again sir bataya tha ki agar animal species mein se bhi different groups jo insects ke yahan pe diye hain unki different alag alag number of species and main mainly aapko ye batana cha raha hu ki we have the diverse planet with number of animal species as well as plant species and all you know india is one of 17 mega diversity country with 2.4% of the global land area and along with you all also know that we are having the four sports of biodiversity out of 36 in the world and coming to rajasthan we have also have the diverse biodiversity this is our state animal of wild category chinkara then the spotted deer neel gai shambar wild boars the beautiful scene of tal chhapar the contrast you can see the riverain area the forest the grasslands and the diverse plants are there the state tree of rajasthan rohida then diverse animals jackal hyena wolf 
be a when small and big cats tiger caracal jungle cat leopard desert cat and the number of birds are there you know the kurjar and number of birds that are in rajasthan and like ye नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स इस सेमिनार में प्रेजेंट है तो इसलिए मैंने हल्का सा एक आपको बायोडाइवर्सिटी है उसको इंट्रोड्यूस किया है बट थ्रेड क्या है इनके लिए और अभी जैसे पोल्यूशन बेस्ड सेमिनार हो रही है तो क्लाइमेट चेंज इज मैन थ्रेड ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इज ए मैन थ्रेड ओजोन लेयर डिप्लीशन इज ए मैन थ्रेड एंड पोल्यूशन बट आई वुड से ये ऊपर जो तीन पॉइंट हैं ग्लोबल चेंज सॉरी ग्लोबल वार्मिंग क्लाइमेट चेंज ओजोन लेयर डिप्लीशन ऑल दीज आर आल्सो ड्यू टू द पोल्यूशन एंड नॉन कोज ऑफ एनिमल एक्सटिंक्शन दैट इज सिंस 1600 दैट इज हैबिटेट डिस्ट्रक्शन सर सॉरी टू इंटररप्ट यू सर योर स्लाइड्स आर नॉट मूविंग ओके ओके दिस टाइम सर वी आर ऑन द फर्स्ट स्लाइड ओनली सर ओके ओके सर ऑल यू हैव टू डू इज गो ऑन द टॉप बार एंड क्लिक ऑन स्लाइड शो एंड देन दे विल यस सर यस वन वन सेकंड प्लीज वन सेकंड प्लीज No ma'am. Uh, no sir, not yet. Sir, what you can do is the other option. Okay. Uh, in the top bar, you can click on slideshow and then click on from beginning, and then it will start. Okay, ma'am. Okay. This time, sir. Right now, your presentation is not visible, sir. Uh, yes sir now we can see your uh, screen you can okay. just click on from beginning okay in the top uh, left corner from beginning either either it is presenting or i have done this it is presenting yes sir it is presenting we can see your screen and we can see your slide and okay. you can just click on from beginning at the top and then you can just click on the arrow and it will move on its own yes yeah, sorry ma'am sorry like aap pehle bol dete okay i have discussed already about the biodiversity i have shared this poem with you already and all the five mass extinctions about the animals it's okay ma'am so you are still on slide second yeah sir on the top click on from beginning yeah, yeah and I, then I but okay. it's not coming it's not coming sir Sorry, sorry. 
one second. It's okay, ma'am. Uh, sir, right now we are on the first slide. Now, what you can do is, if it that if that option is not working, you can move them manually. You can just press uh, the down key and you can just move them, or select from your mouse and you can just scroll them down, and then we will be able to see. That is the other option, sir. Yeah, please try click. Yes, sir. Please try clicking on from current slide or from beginning. Both these options. <laughs> Okay, it's second slide now, ma'am. Yes, sir. Now it's second slide. Yes. Now it's third. Yes, sir. Okay. And you can is... do like that. You can do like that also. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh no, sir. Nothing. No, and... That's nothing. Then I point with you all also, and then all the. I mass extinctions. Then about the biodiversity, International Biodiversity Day. About the number of species, animal species, and about our state animal, the diversity of animals in Rajasthan. The cheetal, sambar, nilgai, wild boars, then tal chapar, then contrast in Rajasthan, the common plant. You can say this flowering state tree of sorry state flower of Rajasthan rohida. Then different wild animals, the cats, the birds, and I was on this. Slide the threats to biodiversity. As already I have discussed this one. Then yes, the main relation to today's seminar that is bioindicator species of animal. With relation to pollution. All you know, environmental pollution from varied sources is now deemed to as one of the most serious problem everywhere. And this pollution must be detected and Biological indicators are living organisms that are plants, animals, or microorganisms which are exploited to detect pollutants in given ecosystem. And these bioindicators explore the lifespan of residents, time of pollutants, integrating past, current, and future ecosystem status. Naturally occurring biological indicators are regularly used to assess a given ecosystem detecting positive and negative changes in the ecosystem. And as you can see, pollutants become part of biological system by food chain and food wave and these pollutants are bioaccumulated in biological systems jaise ki aap dekh rahe hain ki like aur abhi dr mamta madam shuru shuru mein discuss bhi kar rahi thi ki like kis tarah se jo pesticides hain unka kitna negative effect hai so as well as jo pollutants hain through soil to water biological system the plants the vegetable the grains the food 
उनका पार्ट बनने के साथ साथ में एंड देन दीज आर बायो एक्यूमुलेटेड इन एनिमल्स ऑल्सो ऑल द एनिमल्स लाइक यू कैन सी दैट विल बी द पार्ट ऑफ ऑल द प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स इन द फूड चेन और इन फूड वेब and in this this case what we should do that no wastes should be dis disposed in a terrestrial or aquatic ecosystem without having been previously analyzed both chemically or biologically in order to avoid the risk of impairing the ecosystem and most waste contain extensive load of pathogens potential toxic elements and emerging persistent organic pollutants and the terminology biological indicator in an oversight term that describes all sources of biotic and abiotic reactions related to changes in given ecosystem and you can see there are varied bio indicators may be a plant bio indicator forest plants lichens may be a animal bio indicator may be frogs may be aquatic animals may be microbial indicator bacteria fungi cyanobacteria may be planktonic indicator phytoplanktons and zooplanktons and especially always establish species and local disturbances in a given ecosystem are suitable for selecting the biological other species or the gr groups of species and nowadays ecologists have recently established a comprehensive set of criteria for biotas to be deemed as worthy biological indicators the number of animal indicators are there and dissimilarities in animal populations designate harmful changes initiated due to ecosystem pollution animal indicators also help to detect the amount of toxins in animal tissues also all you know our form is a simple animal simple creature but it's a very important biological indicator as this reflects the degree of its pollution as a whole in the ecotoxicology this risk assessment earthworms serve a significant indicator for potential pollutant damaging the ecosystem and earthworms are also act as an early warning early warning system in monitoring changes related to pollution and especially the main resistance mechanism of earthworm to some that are the pollutants such as lead zinc copper mercury are elaborated by its lipid antioxidative enzyme system and that can be measured either in from the soil or by dissecting the atoms and you can see this plant is growing in non contaminated soil and this plant is growing in polluted soil 
you can see the difference in the growth of a plant as well as number of pollutants are bioaccumulated in this plant growing on polluted soil yes the insects these are very important biological indicators and i have already discussed and most of you all now know that the species of insects cover more than half of the total species on this planet sari jitni bhi plants animals total agar aap species dekhe to unka 50% se zyada ke liye insect ki species hai wo cover karti hai lagin you can see through chart that how the insects are also being part of these pollutants and like ants are habitually used as a very sensitive biological indicator having a key role in recovery of degraded ecosystem bees have been known to known as one of the biological metrics most flexible and effective also wasps are vulnerable to be harmful biological accumulation at the top of the food chain and the lead would accumulated up to 36% times the adult body with its mass larvae their genus species are prone bromizing in the detection of lead pollution the termites are important decomposers in terrestrial ecosystem and also considered as important indicators aphids are pollution indicators because they show an increase in their population density when feeding on hosts exposed to ecosystem with high co2 concentrations agar jaise co2 concentration maximum hogi aphids ka number automatically it will be more in that area and other homoptera coleoptera diptera lepidoptera hymenoptera hemiptera isoptera all these are important biological indicator and as well as macro invertebrates the marine invertebrates called benthos or macro invertebrates are also open located near the ground in aquatic ecosystem and these are also known as important biological indicators the fish are well recognized by indicators of environmental changes including metal pollution and are adequate for waters monitoring monitoring programs in fishes some trace metals are in small level public process being naturally absorbed by fishes और ये जो ट्रेस मेटल्स हैं अगर आप देख रहे हैं ट्रेस मेटल्स इफ दीज आर मोर इन अमाउंट विल इंडिकेट द पोल्यूशन लेवल फ्रोक्स एंड टोर्स आर अगेन इंपॉर्टेंट बायोलॉजिकल इंडिकेटर्स एंड फ्रोक्स आर गुड बायोलॉजिकल इंडिकेटर्स फॉर द क्वालिटी एंड चेंज इन ए गिवन इको सिस्टम एज वेल एज the toads are also the important biological indicator and especially in the frogs and toads it has been studied that due to 
pollution there is dna damage is there not only in frogs and in observed that the pollutants damage number of organs not only the liver it affect kidney lungs and other important organs also the reptiles are again very important biological indicators lizards and snakes have been shown to act as indicator of environmental pollution particularly organochlorides for example in canary island where agrochemical has increased dramatically over the last 20 year the lizard calotia galotai was considered a better indicator of organophosphorus contamination than birds other examples are the, also there and birds are again important indicator and all you know that the birds are excellent indicator because of we know so much about their biology and life they eat a variety of foods and as a ground the broad range of niche requirement and birds have been proposed as useful biomonitoring species of pollutants and the environmental indicators have been categorized as sentinels detectors exploiters and accumulators and you can understand their meaning by their name also accumulators are these are species that build up pollutants in considerable amount in their body tissue such as liver kidney lungs skin and feathers and then mammals are also good indicator and you know that mammal represent useful organisms for biomonitoring purposes and can be used in both temporal and spatial information is necessary and among different classes of organisms free ranging animals or wildlife fit based requirement for biomonitoring programs and small number of small mammals are also good bio indicator species free living wild animals are often used to monitor the effect of heavy metal pollution on environment small mammals like voles mice shrews play a substantial role in terrestrial food webs by acting at different trophic levels to evaluate the level of different contaminants wild animals in particular small mammals are interested in recent studies and you can see that the number of species in different area and if they they different body part have been studied the number of metals have been observed in a very large number like bang and common voles they are living in polluted biotopes the lead zinc nickel all these one has been observed from their bone person jeered living in copper mine the number of metals have been observed from their femur liver hair and lungs 
as well as the number of animals are there the bank wolves living in forests at east and south of krasko the number of metals has been observed from their liver kidney spleen also and the golden jackal living on the road along the caspian sea the mercury has been detected from the liver and hair and the rodents living in cultivated area and military area again the lead jing have been observed from their liver and muscles red fox it has been the mercury lead from the liver of red fox and wood mice again number of metals have been detected from the liver and if we come to the birds like aap logo ne kabhi purane samay pe ya kabhi kisi novel mein ya agar aapne word history padhte samay pe dekha hoga ki the like gold mines mein especially जो लोग क्योंकि आप लोगों ने कई बार सुना होगा कि उस खदान में जहरीली गैस की वजह से इतने श्रमिक हैं उनकी डेथ हो गई एंड नंबर ऑफ कंट्रीज में आज की डेट में बहुत हैवी एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी आ चुकी हैं पहले लाइक क्या किया करते थे कि बड़ा एक लंबा सा जैसे बांस लिया करते थे उस बांस के आगे एक छोटा सा पिंजरा में और छोटी चिड़िया रखते थे और जो सबसे आगे चलने वाला जो श्रमिक हैं वो उस बिल्कुल बांस को आगे लेके चलते थे और जहां पे भी अगर जहरीली गैस होती थी तो वो जो बर्ड है बेहोश हो गई या मर गई तो पहले से पता चल जाया करता था कि यहाँ पे किसी इस माइन में जहरीली गैस है नट सेल में अगर मैं क्योंकि तो टाइम बहुत ज्यादा अलाउ नहीं कर रहा है दो एस्पेक्ट मैंने आपके सामने रखे हैं द बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड द बायो इंडिकेटर्स अगर अपन पहले पार्ट बायोडाइवर्सिटी है कंक्लूड ही कर रहा हूँ मैम वैसे मैं अभी तो लाइक जो बायोडाइवर्सिटी पार्ट है जिसको मैं पहले डिस्कस कर रहा था उस बायोडाइवर्सिटी पार्ट को स्पेशली ह्यूमन एक्टिविटी ह्यूमन हैबिट उन पे विशेष रूप से अपने को ध्यान देना होगा अपने को देखना होगा कि अपन एनवायरनमेंट को किसी भी तरीके से पॉल्यूट नहीं करें आप लोग बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी एक्ट बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट 2002 पढ़ा होगा ऑल ओवर वर्ल्ड आपको दिस वन 2011 टू 2020 यूनाइटेड नेशंस डिक्लेयर दिस डिकेड 
a decade of biodiversity. And like all over world, ये efforts किए जाने थे कि 2020 तक biodiversity का जितना degradation हो रहा है, है उसको रोक दिया जाए 2020 के बाद में biodiversity है उसका further degradation नहीं हो and 2030 post 2020 जो कि specialist जो target that is that was from 2020-2030 ये target था कि जो कोई भी biodiversity है उसको कुछ हद तक भी establish कर दिया जाए बट आज आपके सामने है सीन जो अगेन सिनेरियो 2020 था उसको आगे कंसीडर है दैट हैज बीन आगे शिफ्ट कर दिया गया 2030 तक एंड पोस्ट 2030 टू 2050 तक ये एफर्ट्स किए जा रहे हैं कि कोई भी बायोडायवर्सिटी है उसको वापस लेके आया जाए लेकिन ये जो पॉलिसीज हैं वो तभी पॉसिबल है जब अपन शिक्षक समुदाय टीचर्स पूरी सोसाइटी ये स्पेस लिए देखे कि जो बायोडायवर्सिटी है दैट इज नॉट ओनली फॉर वी पीपल इट्स फॉर फ्यूचर जनरेशन द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट सही मायने में अगर कहें कि द डेवलपमेंट दैट लास्ट जिसका कोई एंड नहीं है तो बायो इंडिकेटर तक ज्यादा अपने को पहुंचने की जरूरत ही नहीं रहे अपन बायोडायवर्सिटी की कंजर्वेशन में वन एंड ऑल से गांव धानी का एक एक व्यक्ति सिटी का एक एक व्यक्ति स्कूल का एक एक स्टूडेंट कॉलेज का एक एक स्टूडेंट यूनिवर्सिटी का एक एक स्टूडेंट हर टीचर्स समाज हर एम्प्लॉई सब लोग मिलके अगर इसका सस्टेनेबल यूज लेना शुरू करेंगे तब ही पॉसिबल होगा कि अपन एक आने वाली जनरेशन के लिए कुछ रिसोर्सेज छोड़ेंगे नहीं तो आने वाली जो जनरेशन है वो कोसेगी अपने को कि हमारे लिए हमारी जो पुरानी जनरेशन है वो सब रिसोर्सेज को खत्म करके जा चुकी है तो इन दोनों पार्ट को मैंने एक साथ इसीलिए पहले मैं सिर्फ और सिर्फ बायो इंडिकेटर्स पे बोलना चाह रहा था मुझे लगा कि बड़ा वेरिड ग्रुप है इसलिए दोनों पार्ट को अपन शामिल करते हैं एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने आप सब लोगों से मिलने का इंटरेक्ट करने का मौका दिया मैं सभी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को थैंक यू बोलता हूँ थैंक यू मैडम Thank you so much, sir. That was so amazing lecture. If any questions, please raise your hand so we can unmute you from here. Any questions? Dr. Chandra, uh, the chat box, you can open and see it's flooded with the compliments for you. And we had around 230 participants from 19 countries who have been hearing you. Thank and uh, people you. want the PPT from you to please send it to us so that we can share with our delegates. They really want yes, to see this. Yeah, I, I will send you on the mail. And thank you, ma'am. You are doing excellent. You are thank doing you so excellent much, for the students, ex doing excellent for the teacher community. It's a really very nice seminar for the all students and teacher community. Thank you so much, sir. And still the compliments are coming for you. If there are no more questions, it's the time to formally thank Dr. Chandra. Dear Dr. Thanks. Chandra, thank you so much for an amazing lecture. You spoke about biodiversity and bioindicator animal species. Thank you. And thank the you. poem which you started with, Cry of the Mother, it's very heart touching. It's thank very, you. very thank heart touching. You. you spoke in detail how the habitat of the animal is being contaminated by anthropogenic activities. And actually, we have forgotten that we are no permanent residents on the earth. We have borrowed this earth from our grand 
grand ancestors and we have to transfer it to our grandchildren so at least we should leave it habitable and we are not doing that you very rightly said i and i think it's it's an eye opener for everyone who is present here i thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking out time to the keynote speaker at isdp second your presence and wise words have to magnify our cause in the best possible way all thanks for your enlightening words that inspired so many people out here thank, 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 thank you so much you sir all. it was a pleasure to have you with us thank you ma'am and i will say my video for your email thank you sure sir thanks now it's time for our 15th keynote address which is to be delivered by dr ajay kumar gandhi dr ajay kumar gandhi is currently working as an assistant professor in the department of chemistry at government maharashtra government college of arts and science aurangabad he is pursuing his doctorate from dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university aurangabad and has submitted his thesis on computer assisted evaluation of drug candidates for infectious disease cancer and metabolic disorder proof of concept research proof of concept approach his research interests include computational chemistry computer aided drug designing application of e chemistry and ecotoxicological evaluations he has six research publications in journals of international repute out of which two have been including the who in global literature on covid-19 i must congratulate you, dr gandhi for this he has also presented key papers and or the and poster presentations at international conferences for which he won the best presentation award and again accept the heartiest congratulations dr gandhi is dedicated and hard working teacher who is admired by his students dr gandhi aapka alwar se bahut bahut swagat hai aapka abhinandan hai And now I would request you to kindly start with your keynote address. Dr. Gandhi, stage is all yours. Y yes, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for That's your introduction. Uh, I could not put my video on, but I can uh, present slides. Uh, yes, is sure, there any? Sir. Yes. No, no. Please go. Okay. Ahead. Is my uh, are my slides visible? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Am I audible? You know, good. Yes. yes. Uh, on presentation mode. Yes. Okay. Uh, are slides moving? properly yes they are yeah yeah, yes. yeah let me start from the beginning okay uh, thank you madam for uh, thank you once again for nice introduction uh, myself ajay kumar gandhi as uh, introduced by madam and i'm going to uh, give some presentation on applications of qstr quantitative structure toxicity relationship evaluations in ecotoxicological predictions uh, let's start with the presentation this is a picture uh, i am i am trying to give you uh, the picture of past present and future the training program talk about and it's entitled so this is the past picture i could imagine of because this is the picture uh, when all the homo sapiens sapiens were locked in by corona virus and see how uh, clean and neat picture of environment we can see i could imagine of this picture only because this is the picture of recent past only the long past century i goes and ages i go i don't know what the picture was because i was not that time there but this picture i could see and this is the picture when homo sapiens are you know uh, in working in order uh, this is the present a uh, picture the second picture we can see uh, this is uh, i heard many times that after covid we will shift to new normal but it seems that we are again to back to normal uh, situation see the bank uh, rivers and banks of uh, things and uh, after having these two pictures i really don't want to sound either uh, uh, pessimist or optimist uh, i could not imagine of what picture i should put there it's it's i think that it's the this driven destiny that will take care of that question mark and i hope the uh, destiny is will be decided by our good deeds so uh, the at the beginning only i would like to tell that having the diverse audience like here i try to uh, have presentation little bit uh, diverse way i try to make it uh, I, i try to customize it so that it will suit to test of all the diverse group of participant so uh, this is the case Uh, actually my presentation is on ecotoxicology or ecotoxicity 
what it is that it is the integration of toxicology with the ecology we are trying to find out uh, the toxic effect or we try to evaluate toxic effect of chemicals on biological organisms or that constitute ecosystem as uh, in the first session uh, on the first day only honorable vice chancellor dr uh, professor saxena sir rightly said that everything which is in place is good boon for the society and the environment as well but everything that is not in place as he rightly said that going to be a uh, toxic material or toxic thing for the uh, society at uh, to addition uh, uh, in addition to that i would like to say not only the things which are not in place but right things when they are in excess also are toxic when they delay their stay there they are also toxic delay stay that means they uh, got accumulated there or that term is uh, that term as bio accumulation that sooner or later going to be toxic to the environment and some compounds are when mishandled they are not uh, in their own way uh, toxic but when they are mishandled or not used for the intended purpose then they are toxic so that's the thing we try to find out uh, as a ecotoxicologists uh, and as i said that things by themselves are not toxic but the users um, do some things that that make them toxic so that's the thing what exactly happened when we say certain uh, chemicals are toxic to the ecosystem or to certain target things they target cell that we call as cytotoxicity they disrupt the uh, cell uh, organization and that's why it leads to the toxicity and that leads to the uh, death of animals or uh, destruction of the bio, uh, living things Uh, other targets can be biomolecules not directly cell maybe the biomolecules that constitute cell like dna enzymes proteins and hormones like bio like biomolecules can be uh, targeted and then they cause certain toxic effects what are the symptoms for that the any species or any bio living thing is undergoing such a toxic effect we can uh, see uh, that through the skin issues that are in terms of loss of feathers and fur and scales in fishes and a uh, certain vital organ uh, destruction uh, that leads to death in them destruction of natural food uh, for uh, such as algae that can be a ecotoxic uh, thing and the bad thing that that not uh, this ecotoxicity uh, not get uh, limited to that particular generation of the species but it propagate through the species that it is going to Uh, it may attack to dna uh, things also so that's the uh, really uh, difficult uh, th that that's a really a uh, trouble uh, to the ecosystem a uh, really a heart breaking and disturbing picture but uh, this is an ecological crisis the system going through this is the present of many such a species across the globe across the universe aquatic flora and fauna at the uh, at the most targeted uh, point there and uh, we don't know in future how many more such a species going to get uh, infected uh, or undergo such a ecological crisis and uh, not only such a species but homo sapiens sapiens may be also uh there are uh, also reported an exponential exponential rise in the toxicants in recent times not only in terms of number of toxicants but in uh, in terms of their strength to be toxic to the environment in that terms also uh, there is exponential rise actually this is not just a picture you uh, we people should not look at this just a picture or something to be you know disappointed on or disturbed by this is actually an alarm that is ringing so loudly so loudly that we have we can hear not only through air but we can we we need to hear that sound through our all sensory organs and that alarm is ringing so loudly that we cannot afford to snooze it any more we cannot snooze it off any more we already have snoozed it off snoozed it off many times and now is the alarmingly uh, troublesome situation we are and all the ecosystem in 
then uh, what causes these things uh, as the hazardous chemicals that identified the oecd as the contaminants of emerging concern that the terminology for certain chemicals which are of high uh, toxicity potential what uh, introduced them into the nature that certain pictures i'm posting here not to blame anyone but just to the uh, the, uh, the to give you a real picture that we are not using them uh the the way one should use them or what the protocol to be followed we are not following them certain pharmaceuticals agrochemicals such as pesticides or herbicides we are just going on using them and even cosmetics also we are blindly using them for uh, no reason uh, sometimes and that is causing very uh, troublesome situation to the environment another thing that we are using them in uncontrolled way we are not you know uh, the right amount of thing at right place is really good for the things but we are not using them in a right amount and we are we are uh, literate but we are environmentally or ecologically illiterate we don't know what cause what harm to which species or what uh, biological uh, uh, life system and uh, another thing that though we are using them we are not uh, disposing those uh, carefully we are carelessly disposing after use we are very selfish uh, people uh, who is culprit uh, not debatable we all are culprit uh, for all these things directly or indirectly more or less uh, extent we all are culprit of all these happenings uh, ecotoxic the ecotoxic uh, things happening across the globe maybe we were culprit in the past maybe in the present and certainly we are the culprit in the future if we could not raise our voice raise our voice enough loudly so the authorities which intended to look into the matter politicians or educationalist environmentalist we need to talk about this uh, so enough loudly so that it get heard by the authorities so we all are culprit here and uh, at the same time we need to contribute where we are at what position we are irrespective of, of our educational and professional and financial status we can think of contributing and you will get you will get to know the uh, way out what i can contribute as a teacher of uh, literature what i can do as a lit, uh, science teacher what i can do as a teacher of education so that's the uh we as a chemist have taken uh, or shouldered many responsibilities in the past and we are chemists so we deals with solutions yes we deals with uh, these kind of solutions and we deals with solutions to the problem as well what kind of solutions chemist as a chemist we can provide or i can provide i can experimentally uh, test all the chemicals and uh, for its ecotoxic uh, evaluation i can perform on numerous points i can also do that but it's really cost and time time ineffective numerous chemicals get introduced every day every month every year and it's practically really impossible or it's very costly affair and it's time taking affair to you know synthesize also and test their uh, ecotoxicity it's uh, impracticable also sometimes where it's not possible to reach out to every species in the system and try to find out what toxicity it is posing on and uh, what measures can be taken and it is uh, also sometimes unattainable and because certain chemicals not immediately show any toxicity after they get accumulated after several years of exposure they prove to be uh, toxic so sometimes it's not unattainable we already have we are already late in all the things and we again could not afford to uh, be late in other things also so we really need to think some other solution some innovative solutions like rightly said by geniuses of genius uh, einstein albert einstein once said that we could not solve our problems the, with the same level of thinking that created uh, at the time of uh, creation of those issues we used to think so we have to think uh, really different we need to think green we need to think you know 
way which is you know uh, can contribute to sustainable development and we uh, when you say sustainable development sustainable development means all these things all the human beings uh, irrespective of their financial and educational background can you know develop on their own all the countries irrespective of their um, uh, financial or economical conditions if you want to recharge our globe back to its green uh, state back to its green state and when i say green state it's not that just to grow vegetation green vegetation around when i say green green means where all the living things all the living things let it be micro organisms or micro in the air or under the water in the fresh or marine all the eco uh, system uh, should flourish all the um, stakeholders of the ecosystem must flourish to their fullest potential and of course all human beings also all homo sapiens sapiens also and when i say all homo sapiens sapiens again irrespective of their financial poor at the in the list at the top so we can think green and the computational approach is one of the green uh, think or uh, thing that we can think of what uh, we can think uh, i mean when we uh, restrict our thinking to just uh, use of computers to this eco toxicological predictions we can use toxico for modeling where we try to find out computationally what uh, certain scaffolds or functionalities which are responsible for toxicity and we can when synthesizing the new molecules new entities we can try to avoid it so we can take computer assistance for toxicophoric modeling that is the emerging branch of the computer assisted um, toxicity predictions uh we can think of this qstr technique which is uh, at the focus in this present talk uh, this quantitative structure toxicity uh, toxicity relationship is the technique uh, with the computer assisted we can employ and we can uh, blend it with uh, we can uh, add it uh, with virtual screening where we get idea which molecules to synthesis and which one should avoid uh, molecular docking and molecular dynamic uh, simulations which mimic the practical things what actually happens between the chemical and its target enzyme or protein or dna that can be mimicked uh, by mimicked with the molecular docking techniques and molecular dynamic simulations i'm giving very rough idea uh, if you uh, if you go into details you get the exact applications of these things very well uh, again uh, to fasten the process and to cut on the cost of the things we can uh, em uh, employ this artificial intelligence and machine learning things to enrich the computational tools we can optimize things we can cut on the time and cost as well so eco toxicological evaluations is the prime focus of this uh, qs tr techniques or these computer assisted techniques we can evaluate uh, certain chemicals for their eco toxicity even before uh, their bio testing and even before their synthesis we can just draw a structure we can think of it whether that could be a good uh, material to be synthesized or going to be toxic and uh, that we can get idea from the qstr and other some techniques so that's the uh, uh, benefit of computer assisted and that's why i am saying it is green another uh, use of this computer assistance is that uh, we know that uh, it's in vivo bio testing which uh, you know known for the uh, killing of many such animals mice and guinea pigs and those things so uh, now is the term now environmentalist also animal activists also you know uh, animal sacrifice should be avoided in the uh, laboratory and you can see that a computer assistance can cut hugely on the use of these animals in the laboratory so that's the advantage added advantage and we are uh, thinking of it and we must think of it what is qstr uh, qstr is actually multidisciplinary te te technique here we uh, employ the knowledge of statistics mathematics botany zoology computers and uh, we try to get uh, we try to get such a technique we try to have such a technique which is uh, you know thoroughly checked for all the aspects and uh, if you talk about this technique uh, 
and we if you want to point out uh, the any one or two uh, streams which are more uh, important for this then statistic and mathematics are having huge application because on these techniques and reliability of these techniques only the reliability of whole uh, things which we are trying to do is based on so this is uh, we can say statistical mathematics based in silico approach we are applying statistics and mathematics in a computation with computational assistance uh, this technique is uh, not new it is approved and strongly recommended by various agencies which are actively uh, working in the field of environment protection uh, across the globe so this technique is uh, getting um, uh, being cogn getting cognizance also and getting uh, recommendations from this renowned uh, institutions also qstr or model and equation is what it is it is uh, it is being developed on the basis of this data set of toxicants which already reported for uh, their toxicity they ex they have their toxicity uh, expressed in terms of uh, various parameters like ld50 median lethal dose or minimal inhibitory concentration ic50 or ec50 or values and we use that data set Uh, so we need not to do uh, synthesis of further any molecule for this technique so what already we have with that we can start and what uh, is the beauty here at uh, for this technique is that we thoroughly validate all these uh, equations and models for their reliability robustness and external predictiveness we thoroughly validate them whether data set which we are using is appropriate is you know approved by the statistics and mathematics to be used for the model development we check the more developed model for its robustness also whether it stand uh, withstand uh, the all the questions that will be posed by statistics uh, statisticians or mathematicians and this these models are also have good uh, predictive ability we check for that okay and we also try to have applicability domain analysis also not each model is applicable everywhere one molecule is applicable within certain area of the chemical space and we need to predict that so otherwise misleading results we will get uh, toxicity prediction of untested molecules even before their laboratory synthesis is the key important feature of this uh, technique qstr technique what are the steps involved we have to gather data biological and chemical we are going to see all the steps in detail so i go fast with this we can uh, we have to in the next step have to try molecular descriptors and uh, we have to calculate molecular descriptors and we have to curate data set before we subject it to objective feature selection then what uh, the next step after having objective feature selection is the subjective feature selection and actual development of the model and then once we get the model we have to validate it thoroughly we have to validate internally we have to validate it externally and also we have to know what exact application and how to uh, application of that uh, model is in the ecotoxicological predictions and that's these are the important steps which we can uh, we take in qstr step 1 is data collection here there are two steps chemical data and biological data Okay. chemical data means we must know what is the chemical structure of the molecule which is tested which is proved a toxic or which is tested for toxicity and precise toxicity value we know about so the structure of the that molecule we must know we need to take that molecule which is readable by the computer so smiles is the form of notation which is readable by computer so we must know the smiles notation for that particular compound and we have to uh, get there are two d and three d structures because uh, that way only th those molecules in that three d form only are active uh, forms we have to uh, curate structures we have to have data set free from any salt any charges on any particular atom so we have to have here neutral molecules and we have to perform geometrical optimization which is the least energy uh, conformation chemist very well know this what is geometrical optimization we have to take molecule uh, the in the form in the structural uh, form where it exists actually so we have to take uh, we have to perform geometrical optimization in the chemical data uh, thing 
and the biological data we must know exact and precise bioactivity or toxicity for that particular compound any constant we can take any constant value we can take ic50 ec50 and ld50 and we must know what bioassay technique is used it is recommended that whatever the data set we are using all the molecules it is good and advisable that they are you know uh, predict uh, they are uh, a, a, given there or observed for their uh, bioactivity on the same or uniform bios uh, exemplary file i would like to but uh, at the end i will show because i have to stop presentation and i have to shift to the excel sheet so i will at the end will show all the things in one go so next step is molecular descriptor calculation before we get into uh, the separation these things we must know what is molecular descriptors molecular descriptor means description or quantitative information numerical information of chemical features the molecules which are tested we must know what kind of molecular features in what number they are there for example hydrogen bond hydrogen bond we just uh don't uh, it, it it will not be good idea to just know whether hydrogen bond is present or not we must know how many numbers of hydrogen bonds are there at what distance uh, they are from the carbonyl group or any other functionality in that particular molecule uh, from the center of mass of the molecule we must know uh, at uh, aromatic uh, ring carbon uh, the hydroxyl group we are talking about or is beneficial or the alicyclic ring so we try to get all sort of information regarding that molecule when we say we are trying to find out molecular description or molecular descriptor for that molecule we try to get all the uh, possible information so better is always good more and more information more and more number of molecular descriptors you have uh, for the certain molecule better uh, we can have the uh, predictions on the activity we get to know all the possible uh, molecular features which actually play, play role and makes that particular molecule active or toxic against particular target uh, there are freely available software because manually it is very difficult to you know enlist all the molecular features in terms of number so there are uh, software is developed free and open software proprietary software is also available but i'm uh, you know pointing here free and open source software are also available so that you know additionally cut on the um, uh, cut on the cost of the research also so they are available online and offline we can use online them directly we can offline download and we can use them they are web based also and in downloadable form also available for example pi descriptor which can give you uh, about 45000 different molecular descriptors of different type and paddle and many other there are uh, you can just search for and you get to know what uh, softwares are there which can give you what kind of molecular descriptors and the molecular descriptor this pi descriptor uh, you know comprises from zero dimensional to up to three dimensional molecular descriptors so we have uh, energy related we have quantum uh, mechanical related descriptors as well so truly a uh, vast uh, array of molecular descriptors we can get if we use this software uh, again i will show example if i at the end uh, one thing that uh, once we have all this uh, molecular uh, features calculated this may happen that two molecular features are interrelated having one only is enough to get idea for the uh, about the other so in objective feature selection we do what we try to contract see the 45 uh, column uh, molecular descriptors uh, in the 45 columns that gives you a huge data set and that additionally you know take time for the computation and this thing so better uh, you can contract the data set and only relevant molecular descriptors will be screened uh, irrelevant will be screened off and only relevant will be uh, screened in for the uh, further process so objective feature selection uh, discard uh, irrelevant molecular descriptor or repeated molecular descriptor or constant molecular descriptors or for those values is values are zero for those also Uh, step third is actually the important step. Now, till uh, step two, we are in the just preparatory uh, state. We are now prepared with all the things, all the weapons, and now we can jump into the model development. That is the subjective feature selection and object. Uh, this QS QSTR model development. 
a data splitting uh, that is important step when before get into subjective feature selection what data splitting is data splitting like i in the beginning only uh, told you that we need to validate models developed we have to develop uh, we have to validate them internally and externally for external uh, validation we have to have a a set of molecules which never shown to any software never used before and they are very new to the model model and we try to apply that model and we try to find out whether that model could predict exactly or precisely uh, precise values or by activity or toxicity for that molecule those molecules so that's the data splitting so in data splitting in certain uh, software data splitting is in build function where random data splitting uh, happen let me tell you example when if you have a data set of 100 molecules uh, we are not going to use all the 100 molecules for the development of the model we will just use 80% uh, of the molecules 80 molecules only uh, which known with the activity uh, exact and precise activity uh, or toxicity and we will develop model based on that only and that too we are doing randomly we are not biased with the things we are not you know Uh, biased with the uh, selection of the molecules for data uh, model development and we are not even biased for the prediction set also so remaining 20% which are also already tested for the toxicity but never shown to any algorithm any uh, software for the uh, or any computational tool that we can use and that is as good as the synthesis of new molecules for the external prediction so that the data splitting we are employing here so this is also a good uh, approach we need not to even test the uh, robustness of the molecule have to synthesize new molecules existing data set can suffice the uh, intended purpose can serve the purpose uh, various different regression techniques linear non linear and various different statistical mathematical techniques are in use you can use genetic algorithms also which gives you uh, clear uh, you know selection process like in the nature there in neural networks also in random forest uh, technique also we can use this all uh, terminologies are well used in uh, and employed and used in uh, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence so those who are uh, in the field they know what is the advantage of these things Uh, example at the end i will show then check of the reliability robustness and predictiveness data fitting parameter this may happen that it is uh, it, it is really impracticable that uh, all the different uh, molecules which we have chosen for the uh, model generation uh, have been uh, synthesized by the same in the same laboratory by the same group of researchers this is impractical and not uh, you know uh, the achievable thing also across the globe various research laboratory working on different chemicals and synthesizing and biotesting them different using them different using uh, different uh, biotesting things but a statistic will take care of that even though you are using different um, uh, results uh, the data set which is uh, you know uh, we get uh, or the data set we have or the uh, this activity values we have from different assays this data fitting parameters if you can evaluate our model on data fitting parameters and if the values are about approved threshold values we can treat that data set as good as the uniform data set so that's the application of statistic here and here internal validation so at the first place Uh, we have avoided the thing that garbage in and garbage out we are not letting any garbage data in so we are not having any garbage uh quality model which is not applicable or giving you misleading information so we have taken care of that computational tools take care of that as well we can do internal validation which molecules were used for the development of the model same molecules can be used for the validation this time we use our model to predict their values and we try to find out how close uh, the uh, the model can predict actual uh, values of the activity closer the values in the internal validation better uh, model uh, we can say that we have developed and at the same time not only the molecules which already used but the new molecules as i earlier explained that external data set also we can use here also we did not try to synthesize new molecules 
existing molecules which never shown to the uh, algorithm can be used for the external prediction. And here also we try to find out how close, how reliable predictions our model can perform on this data set. And based on uh, these approved threshold values, we can have this uh, model uh, marked with its reliability, robustness, and predictiveness for the future bioactivity predictions. Uh, and we also need to define its applicability domain. Not all the models are applicable everywhere. What a chemical space we worked with, uh, we have, uh, we had in the data set we used only on that uh, domain of the chemical feature, our model will be applicable. And in future also, when we are synthesizing new molecules, we will check whether that molecule fit into the applicability domain of this model. Only that will be subjected for the prediction. So any misleading uh, application of this model can also be avoided. So at uh, every stage, we are taking care that we are not getting driven off we are not you know off the track from what the intended purpose is having misleading information additionally you know because after having predictions on the activity then only we will go into laboratory and we will synthesis molecule and we actually test them but if you already had information itself wrong misleading information we fetch from this model then uh, again that will be uh, not good uh, thing to do so here also this computational application take care of that we define clear model applicability uh, we define applicability open very clearly so any misleading uh, information can be avoided exemplary uh, and exemplary file i will show at the end and again uh, i would uh, like to uh, uh, say here that Having QSTR uh, blended with or supported with artificial intelligence and machine learning, not only fast, how fast and this all the processes, but also is useful on killing the time constraint and cost constraint. So Arish, as the computational power uh, and uh, computational advancement are happening, artificial intelligence and machine learning are also you know, cutting time and cost in an exponential way. So it's time to uh, have the application of these things in the computational approaches also. So uh, this is the my overall presentation. I hope you, I, I, I know that I have uh, given very superficial idea at every step, there are sub steps and each sub step is having rationalization, what to do, what not to do, what precautions to be taken. But I have tried to give you uh, overall picture, uh, uh, considering the diverse uh, the participant group that uh, I am I supposed to address. So thank you for your patient listening. And uh, yes, as a chemist, I am at uh, your help. If you want any help, uh, any question regarding this, if you want to collaborate on this, because truly this is multidisciplinary approach. And I will be happy if uh, people from diverse people other than chemistry, like to, even from chemistry also, a toxicology, cosmetologist, uh, like to join us. So thank you so much. These are my contact details. And if you have any questions, I will be happy. Uh, after taking questions, Madam, uh, hello. Yes, yes. Am I audible, Madam? Yes, uh, yes I, very much. I just left with uh, some uh, Excel files that I want to show people. Uh, but in between, Please if go there ahead. are questions, you can appeal to the participant. I will be happy. Otherwise, I can uh, you know, shift to this Excel sheet uh, things. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. yes you sir. can see the Excel sheet he was showing. Uh, yes, yes, uh, I was, but I thought there are, there are some questions. Let me stop. Any questions? Uh, if someone has any questions, uh, please raise your hand so we can unmute you from here. Dr. Gandhi, there's so many compliments for you, trust me. And you had around 200 participants from 21 countries while you were talking. Okay, nice. No questions. There's means... one question. There's one question. There's one yeah. question in the chat box. Need purified drinking water throughout the country. What is the standard pH of purified drinking water? This is by Kamal Kishore. Uh, 
sorry i really don't have idea but what is uh, the question is need a purified drinking water throughout the country what is the standard ph of purified drinking water of oh, i really don't know i mean the neutral seven is all the recommended that is an achievable thing actually but uh, alkaline water and acidic water there are many things nutritionists and many researchers we are talking about but neutral ph or plus neutral ph 7 is always the recommended one yes i agree with dr khan for the drinking PH7. purpose but uh, i am uh, i'm really very sorry but i am not sure about this because many no, no. researchers talking about neutral water and seven. best things for good health it is 7 you are right dr gandhi it is 7 yes. it is 7 and uh, there are different kind of waters now available black water and alkaline yes. water and so many kind of waters are available which nutritionist uh, they uh, tell people to take according to their health conditions but the potable drinking water as dr gandhi has mentioned it is 70 at 70 close to 7 that is yeah manikandan lingan wadi the another question is purified drinking water is good for health or not i think they need to say maybe the aro water or something they want to say but there is a question uh, really i i don't know <laughs> honestly i don't know i i mean there are diverse opinion on this when yes. when we are when when we are, when we are talking about this uh, ro purified water and uh, ph values and these things but close to 7 is always good here i can answer on the behalf of the dr gandhi actually the ro water what you are talking is it depends upon the kind of the water supply suppose so if it, it has a more of fluoride then you will have a purifier which is going to reduce the content of fluoride but there are some places there are more uh, biological contaminants like in villages are there then they are recommend not to remove those uh, microorganisms from the water so it is totally dependent upon the kind of the water supply and the situation the family or the person is living in mm-hmm. but there are particular standards of the water which is termed as potable water or drinkable water having uh, uh, permissible limits of certain quantities of minerals and everything so i think if you go on google get all the answers even certain ro and purifiers provide minerals also they yes. have the, the rock inside copper and everything is coming up now so and that going to alter ph value of water even yes so there is uh, another question so natural uh, yes ma'am i just want to show excel sheets so people get idea what actually the work is there is one more mm-hmm. uh, there is one more question dr gandhi natural nitrogen monoxide mm-hmm. which is beneficial to health what is your view or opinion Yes, uh, it's an antioxidant property that nitrogen monoxide having. So, to in the natural form, if you are consuming such a diet that is providing this NO, then that is going to be good for the health. Yes, now we can shift your Excel sheets. Yes, uh, let me share Excel sheet. Okay. so uh, these are the smiles notation for the molecule which i was talking about these are the chemical st- molecules only which are here in the readable format for the computer and these are their reported values which actually reported in nanomolar unit not in ppb or any other way this is the standard uh, unit that must have nanomolar molar actually nano or micro and uh, this we can convert them to handleable numbers in icpp ic50 values so they become handleable for and these are the molecular descriptors which are calculated by various descriptors you can see the number is you know around here it is 15000 really a huge file this is manually really difficult to get so computer assistance is recommended and is useful even then uh, second this is the actual uh, file which can be uh, used for the process 
uh, this is the data uh, that we calculate. These are the statistical parameters. These are first uh, till 14 number. They are uh, fitting parameters and these are internal validation parameters and there are certain external validation validation parameters. And these are the approved uh, threshold. These are the values which actually obtain and they, they, there are well-defined approved threshold values. Having these values above that, we can rely, we can have, we can say that the model is reliable one. And this is uh, just a minute. Uh, these are the models which we use to get after the uh, computational and statistical mathematical applications. Here we can see these are the uh, experimental endpoints which are predicted and uh, you know actual values. And based on that, we can have their leverages how different uh, or how precisely or not precisely or not so precisely the uh, predictions could be performed. And these are certain, uh, let me, okay, let me shift to another Excel sheet. I think we are not able to see your uh, Excel sheets. Oh, uh, Excel sheets are, we are not visible. Just let me show, oh, I stopped presenting, that's why. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, madam, I go on talking. No worries. Please go. Now uh, visible, baby. Yes. Uh, so this is the molecular descriptors. These are. And you can see for uh, about 219 molecules we have, 229 molecules we could calculate about 15,000 to 60,000 molecular descriptors within a span of say minute or two. So that's fast, uh, the process can be with the computational assistance. And uh, another thing that I want to show is, Just a minute. Let me open that Excel sheet. We, uh, how much more time I have, madam? Or I already taken. You, car you carry on as much as possible. Okay, okay. Let so me open so many people Excel. are very much interested in listening to you, Dr. Gandhi. Okay, okay, okay. Just a minute. It is just a superficial idea that I'm trying to give. So uh, may uh, may not people learn here ecotoxicological predictions with QSTR, but they get interested interested into. So maybe in future they will uh, be happy to work on this. Um, wow. uh, this is how we try to know. Yes, my Excel sheet is visible and graph is also visible. No, here yes, we yes. try to uh, plot a certain uh, things and we get to know with what how many numbers of molecular descriptor our model will be. Uh, performing well and that only model or within that limit only we will propose models and again this is mathematical statistical application nothing uh, you know human inter uh, interruption in this or no involvement of uh, manual task here all the things are doing uh, are done by the software only so they are reliable so uh, the case so I guess this is uh, the thing let me Uh, I was talking about this applicability domain, so that I want to show just because that is very important. Not all the QSAM models can be applied anywhere. They have their defined uh, region where they can be applied and we get reliable information there. Yes, uh, this is what the graphical representation where it is Williams uh, plot actually, where we plot molecules against their leverage uh, values or their uh, values or their different standard deviation from the actual values. And the molecules which do not fall in this rectangle, this blue color rectangle, we call them as outliers or no, not good. Why is small in what is it? Hello? Image is visible, no, madam? Ma? Yes, yes, sorry, sorry. That was this is the applicability domain analysis. Those molecules which will fall out of this box, we will not, we are not going to use them for the prediction. So that's the uh, beauty of this. 
So at every step, we have avoided uh, and avoid entering into laboratory, and we try to be with all the weapons sharpened, and then we enter into the laboratory. That's what the beauty of this technique is. Yet there are many advantage, uh, advan, uh, advan, advancements we, uh, you know, prog progn prognosticated, but the, the as and when the computational evaluation uh, taking place, we will get to that point. So that's the thing. So thank you uh, uh, to the organizer. Thank you to the audience they, for their patient listening. Thank you to the organizers for giving me such a nice opportunity to talk to the globe on the global issue. So thank you so much. Yes. There are some more questions for you, Dr. Gandhi. Please open yes. the chat box. Uh, there is a question, something, what, what is immunobiotic? Sorry? Uh, can I read and ask? Ah, please, you can see in your chat, it is, what is immunobiotic? And second is, I have a one doubt regarding our water cells. Somebody are saying it is good for human health, you know, but somebody but you are saying it's not good for health, it is not good by the uh, Immunogenes are genes related to immuno, immune responses. The, uh, and I guess, uh, madam, you can uh, answer on this uh, well that these are autosomal uh, genes, no? Those response to yes, immune, yes. Uh, responsible for immune responses. So I guess that is the question. But I really, uh, really don't know on this. Yeah, there is another that one doubt regarding RO water. I think I, I and Dr. Gandhi has already answered this, yes, depending upon the kind of supply you are getting. Uh, I have for the for, yeah, under potable I water, there are certain permissible limits for everything, for minerals, for anything. Yes. So to get to reach near that thing, it depends yes. that what kind of a supply you are getting. Support it has more fluoride. Support it has more minerals. Support it has got more salt. Then the, that type of RO will be applied. So definitely RO water is good for health because it will remove the bacteria and it will save you from diseases. It will remove excess of everything which is beyond the permissible. So RO is definitely good for health. But again, you have to decide the RO or the type of water supply you are getting. If you are getting only the low, having uh, uh, getting a supply which is having low minerals and further you put it through the uh, RO which will further remove the minerals, then it, will, it makes no sense. And as Dr. Gandhi said, now we are getting arrows which provide minerals also. Mm -hmm. So that is a step higher. And one, one question is also something we need to think of. Why we are shifting to RO? Why we are not using natural resources? Can we do something for that? That is also one yeah. question. That's a very important question. Yes. yes. There is no need to shift to uh, many things uh, anytime or but we just blindly follow and go into that and just increase our comfort things as yesterday Rashmi Agli Madam uh, was talking about. So, that's it. so thank you so uh, much. I can answer, answer that question for you, Dr. Gandhi, because and and Dr. Have shared Dr. Gandhi is also with us. So Dr. Satyendranath is also with us and he can also add something to it. See, right now the pollution and everything has increased so much, we cannot go back to the practices which were there 40 years back. This I'm talking to all my viewers. 20 years ago, there was no pollution, and there was no water that was bad, that we had to use the RO. But today, when we sit in 2022, and the pollution level has so much increased, everything has so much polluted, so we will have to bring some things like this, RO. हमें पानी को प्यूरिफाई करके पीना ही पड़ेगा चाहे हम चाहे चाहे हम ना चाहे चाहे हम उसे उबाल कर भी है चाहे हम उसे छान कर भी है चाहे हम उसे आरो के थ्रू पिए तो वी कैन नॉट गो टू द मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रैक्टिसेस जो आज से 40 साल पहले थे आज टेंपरेचर इतना ज्यादा बढ़ गया एसी के बिना शायद सर्वाइवल मुश्किल आदमी तो हीट स्ट्रोक से ही मर जाएगा जहां मैं रहती हूं अलवर के अंदर यहां 48 टेंपरेचर टच कर रहा है बिकॉज़ इट इज सराउंडेड बाय द uh, mountains, rocky mountains. So, if you don't keep it in the cold, then you will die from heat strokes. So, there are certain practices 
एंड दिस इज वॉट वी है अपनी मदर नेचर को या वो बदला ले रही है हमसे सो लेट्स बी टाइम टू मदर नेचर एंड आई थिंक आई एम आई ट्राई टू आंसर वॉट इज अनदर क्वेश्चन Medicines are useful, poison, clinical pharmacology. So this is something else. So uh, I think now it's time to formally thank Dr. Gandhi. Dr. Gandhi, you spoke about the application of quantitative structure toxicity relationship, and the picture which you started your talk that was a river bank picture. What was the status of the bank when COVID-19 pandemic was there, and what is the present situation? It is flooded with all garbage, and you left our future with a question mark. I think this is for what we are here. It was very eye-opening. You touched upon eco eco toxicity or ego toxicology. You spoke about USTR in detail, and I hope it's a new era of research, and more and more people should get into it. Slides were very beautiful, self-explanatory, and you said that um, artificial intelligence and machine learning and all is the voice of the future. Definitely. Thank you so much. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for giving up your valuable time to talk in ISTPT two. It was a great pleasure to hear you to talk about saving the environment. It was quite apparent that how every single person, including me, here was engrossed in your talk. And trust me, there's so much more to learn from your knowledge and experience. Experience, it's a treat here. Thank you so much. So now it's time for our 16 keynote address to be delivered by Dr. Satyendra Nath. Dr. Satyendra Nath. is presently working as a head and assistant professor in the department of environmental science and nrm college of forestry shu ags allahabad he joined the department of environmental science and nrm college of forestry in 2007 dr nath has completed his btech agriculture engineering for allahabad agriculture institute university of allahabad in the year 1997 and masters of engineering in environmental engineering from mnit allahabad In 2001, he obtained his PhD degree in environmental engineering from the Department of Civil Engineering from MNIT Allahabad in 2008. He has worked as an environmental consultant for planning and designing of water supply and sewer system for Haryana Urban Development Authority and PHD Department, Government of Haryana. His areas of specialization include water quality, environmental impact assessment, water and waste water treatment, water quality modeling, solid waste management and environmental science and engineering. He is currently teaching and guiding undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral students on their project work, dissertations and thesis. He has published more than 50 research publication in international national journals. He has guided four PhD and more than 40 master theses during past 12 years. He has attended more than 30 international and national conferences. He was a professional member, associate editor, reviewer of reputed international national journals. He has received MHRD fellowship, Young Scientist Award in the year 2011, and Young Environmentalist Award in 2018. and best teacher award in 2019 for outstanding contribution in the field of environmental science and engineering please accept our heartiest congratulations dr nath aapka bahut bahut swagat hai aapka bahut bahut abhinandan hai dr nath par uh, before you start with your keynote address aap us prashn ko answer kare jiska answer main dene ki koshish kar rahi thi thank you ma'am <laughs> mujhe aap, mujhe, lag, mujhe lag raha tha ki aap sahi direction mein thi uh, नहीं पर हम थोड़ा एड ऑन ही करेंगे की ये बिल्कुल ये सत्य है की भाई की आप मान के चलिए की पानी जो है पोलूटेड हो रहा है डे बाई डे उसके पीछे बहुत से कॉजेज रीजन सभी लोग जानते हैं अब उसके लिए हमें एक सर्टेन मेजर तो लेना पड़ेगा वॉट एंड बोन डिजीज बचने के लिए लेकिन हम उसको लेते लेते उस डिजीज से बचने के लिए हम किसी एक नए सिस्टम को अडॉप्ट कर रहे हैं और वो सिस्टम ऐसा है कि वो उसके प्रो एंड कॉज हम अभी नहीं जान पा रहे हैं अब उस एक एक अनदर माध्यम आपने लिया आर ओ रिवर ऑफ मोसिस अगर आप मतलब बड़ा आश्चर्यचकित करने वाला ये है कि अगर आर आप यूज कर रहे हैं रिवर ऑफ मोसिस बेसिकली हमारा पर्पज क्या है कि हम वॉट एंड बोन डिजीज जो है जो उसके अंदर उनको उनको उन माइक्रो जो बैक्टीरिया और वायरसेस उनको किल करना है हमारा पर्पज है 
अब आरओ का सिस्टम थोड़ा सा एक अलग हट के बात करिए और कहीं कोई परचेज करने जाता है आरओ तो सबसे पहले अगर कोई आता है सबसे पहले आपका टीडीएस चेक करता है अब बोलता है आपका टीडीएस बहुत अधिक है आप कभी बात करिए सबसे पहले टीडीएस टीडीएस मतलब टोटल डिजोल्व टॉयलेट मशीन ही लेके आएगा आपके घर में और दिखाएगा जैसे सर आप ये देख लीजिए और कोई इसके पास कोई ऑप्शन नहीं है बात करने का बोलेगा आपका सर टी डी एस फोर थ्री हंड्रेड फोर हंड्रेड कैन यू इमेजिन टी डी एस इज अलाउबल मे बी पांच सौ से डेढ़ हजार का टी डी एस हम अलाउबल है कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती कोई ऐसा इश्यू नहीं है वो टी डी एस भाई टोटल रिजोल्व सॉलिड है वो उसके अंदर रहेगा उसको वो फोकस करके आपको वो मशीन को शेल करता है भाई अगर डिजोल्व सॉलिड मिनरल जो कंपोजिशन अगर वो नहीं रहेंगे तो हमारी बॉडी कहीं ना कहीं एक डिफिशेंसी के स्ट्रक्चर्स में चली जाएगी और डिफिशेंसी किस रूप में आएगी वो एक दिन का नहीं है इट विल टेक टू थ्री फोर फाइव इयर्स तो आप ये देखेंगे बहुत से केसेस में लोग कभी घुटने की शिकायत करते हैं कभी कभी किसी चीज को कमी की कभी कोई था डिफरेंट इश्यूज रेज हो रहे हैं हम एक चीज बचने के लिए दूसरी चीज का बिल्कुल डिफिशेंसी कर दे रहे हैं हमें बचना है वाटर बोन डिजीज से वो एक, एक माध्यम हो सकता है उसके लिए बहुत से तरीके थे और तरीके आप कह नहीं सकती हैं कि पहले पुराने जमाने में लोग सैंड फिल्ट्रेशन घड़ा रखते थे उसके अंदर थ्री लेयर्स का एक चारकोल सैंड और उसको बिछाते थे उसके अंदर पानी परकुलेट करके नीचे जाता था वो 99.9 परसेंट प्योर होता था तो पर्पस हमारा ये था उसके अंदर टीडीएस की भी कमी नहीं होती थी और दूसरी चीज वो जितने भी माइक्रोबियल कंटेंट थे वो वहां पर रिमूव हो जाते थे तो अगर हम एक चीज बचा रहे हैं तो दूसरी चीज के लिए भी हम तैयार रहे मतलब सिस्टम में तो ये उसका मेन कॉज है किसी से भी अगर आपके पास आता और बिजने बोले भैया इसमें हमारे कितना बैक्टीरियल काउंट है या कुछ एमपीएन बता दो या कोई थी वो बात ही नहीं करेगा बोलेगा टीडीएस ओनली तो ये ये टीडीएस का इम्पैक्ट आप पांच सालों में छह सालों में आठ सालों में आप लोगों को अपने शरीर पे पाएंगे भी और पा भी रहे हैं मतलब दिखाई भी पड़ रहा है उसका तो एक मेरा इसमें थोड़ा यही एडिशन था कि इससे थोड़ा सा एक अलर्ट जोन में देखें आप उनसे वो बात ना करके आप उन चीजों को फोकस करें जो हमारे लिए रिक्वायरमेंट है हाँ तो मुझे लगता है कि ये थोड़ा सा एक ऐसा पॉइंट है जिसपे एक बहुत डिस्कशन की जरूरत है एक लॉन्ग टर्म रिसर्च प्रोसेस है उसको हेल्थ एसोसिएटेड प्रॉब्लम से आता आप जोड़ करके काम कर सकते हैं कि भाई किस मिनरल का कम्पोजिशन किसके वजह से हो रहा है किस वजह से कमी हो रही है हार्ट डेस्क भी है तो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है टीटिया सदी का बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम नहीं है लेकिन मोस्ट प्रॉब्लम बैक्टीरिया आई कॉल आई ये सब नहीं होने चाहिए पानी में उनपे हमें फोकस करना है और वही सब मेजर कॉजेज है वॉटर एंड बोर्ड डिजीज के Thank you, Dr. Dr. Gandhi has raised the hand. Please unmute Dr. Gandhi. Dr. Gandhi, please go ahead. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, regarding that only, people do what? Look, क्या करते हैं तो बस उसी पैरामीटर को वो एक अप्रूव थ्रिश होल्ड वैल्यू मान लेते हैं तो मेरा ये कहना है की आपको हर एक uh, बात के लिए एक स्टैंडर्ड रेफरेंस की आदत डाल देनी चाहिए जी जी। आपके एरिया में जो कोई स्टैंडर्ड रिसर्चर्स है उनसे बात करनी चाहिए और फिर उस किसी एक सॉल्यूशन पे जाना चाहिए आप देखोगे तो फॉर एंड अगेंस्ट दोनों तरह से काम करने वाले वीडियोस यूट्यूब पे होते हैं हाँ, 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 हर हर रोज एक कोई नया लेके आता है कॉन्सेप्ट इनोवेशन के नाम पे लोगों को मतलब थोड़ा सा ये करने के लिए कुछ एक नई चीज छोटी सी ला देते हैं तो हम वो थोड़ा सा मतलब ओवरलोड जो होता है इंफॉर्मेशन का उसकी वजह से ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम होती है तो सिंपल अपनी बॉडी को अगर हम अपने बॉडी के सिग्नल्स को हम अगर ठीक से पहचानना शुरू करें तो मुझे लगता है कि शायद जरूर भी ना पड़े आपके दांतों पे पीलापन आपको लग रहा है कि पहले नहीं था अब हो रहा है तो कुछ तो अलग हो रहा है आपको पहले थर्स्ट मतलब यूरिनेशन या मतलब जो होता है पथरी बोलते हैं अगर उसका है तो आपको सोचना पड़ेगा कि पहले तो नहीं होता था इस एरिया में शिफ्ट हुआ तो क्वेश्चंस को अगर आप ठीक से करोगे तो मुझे लगता है और नई चीजें आ रही है एक्चुअली मोस्ट ऑफ दिटामिन डिफिशेंसी बहुत आप भी जाएंगे तो कहीं ना कहीं एक अपनी बॉडी में चेक कराते हैं तो आपको कोई ना कोई डिफिशेंसी मालूम पड़ेगी थोड़ा हम बहुत हेल्थ कॉन्सियस भी हो गए हैं तो वो भी एक बहुत बड़ा रीजन बनता है को हम छोटी चीजों के लिए बहुत भागते हैं लेकिन मैं इन केस ऑफ वाटर है सीन कि आप इससे बहुत घबराए नहीं आप कभी आरो आरो अगर आप चाहते हैं लगाना चाहते हैं उसके लिए कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है आप सिस्टम एडॉप्ट कर सकते हैं लेकिन आप उनके मेज मेजर कॉजेज में डिस्कस करें कि नहीं नहीं ये चीजें इसके अलावा तो आपका क्या है वो सिस्टम पे बात करें तो मुझे लगता है वो बेहतर है और 
इतनी अलाउबल स्टैंडर्ड लिमिट है गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की सीपीसीबी की डब्ल्यू एच ओ की वो स्टैंडर्ड लिमिट्स में आपका पानी अभी भी चेक करें तो आप आपको मालूम पड़ जाएगा कि वो इतना हाई रेंज नहीं होता मोस्ट ऑफ द स्पेशल रेफरेंस हो सकता है कहीं फ्लोराइड कंटेंट हो कहीं आयरन है कहीं हैवी मेटल है तो एक बहुत बड़ा इश्यू हो सकता है लेकिन और सब चीजों के लिए जिसको केमिकल पैरामीटर्स के लिए बहुत इश्यूज नहीं है मतलब मेरा जो टोटल टोटलिटी ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस है मैं देख रहा हूँ और समझ रहा हूँ क्योंकि ये बहुत एक इम्पोर्टेंट इश्यू भी है छोटी छोटी चीजें विद द टाइम वो एक्सपेंड करती हैं आई होप कि एवरीबडी को उसको थोड़ा देखना चाहिए और अवेयरनेस से ही चीजें कुछ हद तक हम कंट्रोल करेंगे और और एक दूसरी बात होती है सर कि एक मेडिसिनल रिपोर्ट्स जो होते हैं मेडिकल रिपोर्ट जी, 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 तो उसमें जो रेफरेंस वैल्यू दी जाती है ना तो उसको भी पता नहीं किसने कस्टमाइज किया है उनके बेनिफिट के लिए जी, तो जी, उसके जी, बारे में भी बड़ा अवेयरनेस आना जरूरी है एक्चुअल स्टैंडर्ड रेफरेंस वहां पे साइट करना चाहिए कि ये रेफरेंस वैल्यू इस लिटरेचर से लिया गया है तो ये भी हमें मुझे लगता है की ये बहुत ये बहुत बड़ा है आप डिफरेंट लेबोरेटरीज में जाएंगे उनके रेफरेंस वैल्यूज डिफरेंट डिफरेंट है यू कैन गो फॉर द गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल यू कैन गो फॉर द एम्स यू कैन गो फॉर द अदर लेबोरेटरी द रेफरेंस वैल्यू आर इंटायरली डिफरेंट ये एक बहुत बड़ा इश्यू है बहुत अच्छा पॉइंट है मतलब इस पर भी हमें देखना चाहिए कि क्या लिमिट होना चाहिए लिमिट से ऊपर नीचे चलता है लेकिन उसको किस तरह रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं ये भी इम्पोर्टेंट है लेकिन हमें किस स्टैंडर्ड सेकेंड ओपिनियन थर्ड ओपिनियन ऑल ऑल इन दैट रेंज ओनली Thank you so much, sir, for your thank time you, and thank you, pleasure for giving me to interact thank with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gandhi, and thank you, Dr. Nath. We were ready for the question for you. मैं अपना topic छोड़ करके आ गई. आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है, sir. आपका अभिनंदन है. बहुत खुशी हो रही है आपको अपने साथ देखकर हमें. नहीं मैं. Please start. आप लोग को मना कर पाना भी मुश्किल है. कैसे मना करा जाए? आप. इसे मत करिए. आप. हम ये. आप तो करेगा भी मत आप तो फैमिली है अब हमारे साथ जो जो मिशन पे हम चले हैं हम चाहते हैं आप जैसे लोग हमारे साथ जुड़े बहुत हम अप्रिशिएट करते हैं जो डायनेमिक जो एनर्जाइज जो जो एनर्जी वाली टीम है इसको मतलब जो ऊर्जा स्तर को बढ़ा देती है और एक अवेयरनेस मतलब स्टूडेंट मतलब एक लोग सीख रहे हैं जुड़ रहे हैं बहुत सी चीजों को इंटरेक्ट हो रहे हैं हम भी लोग किसी सिचुएशन में आ जाते हैं तो देखते हैं कि नहीं मतलब हाईली वेल्यूबल मतलब एक इन्फॉर्मेशन आ रही है और डेफिनेटली वो कहीं ना कहीं हम इनडायरेक्टली और डायरेक्टली सोसाइटी और कंट्री के लिए ही काम कर रहे हैं ऑर्गेनाइजर एक प्रोग्राम को भी ऑर्गेनाइज करने के बाद दूसरे दिन ग्लूकोज और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक पाउडर साथ लेकर जाना पड़ता है हम लोग मंथ्स बैठे रहना दिन भर एक हम लोग सेशन दो घंटे का मतलब बहुत मुश्किल होता है हाँ ठीक है देखते हैं भाई यार कितने देर चलेगा पहले ही हम लोग पूछते हैं पता लगा कि अच्छा है एक घंटे ठीक है थोड़ा कम हो सकता है तो अच्छा है तो अब आप लोग सवेरे शाम तक एक एक ट्रेनिंग कम्प्लीट हुई दूसरी ट्रेनिंग मतलब मुझे लगता है कि आगे का दो तीन महीने का ऑलरेडी मुझे लगता है अगस्त तक का पूरा शेड्यूल आपका बना हुआ है ऑनलाइन ऑफलाइन and we really hope that you'll be coming in our offline uh, conference definitely and definitely we are so you dr gandhi definitely thank you so much sir yeah. so bahut motivation milta hai aapki baat se i i would like to say that aap sabhi bhi kuch bulaiye main aapki help ke liye taiyar hunga aap bulaiye so nice dr gandhi thank you so much so dr nath please go ahead with your uh, okay okay uh, thank you thank you ममता uh, uh, मैम एंड थैंक यू पार्टिसिपेंट दो हजार एसोसिएटेड विद द टूडे ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम एंड नाउ टू आवर मे बी टूडे लेक्चर इज बेस्ड ऑन वी हैव सिंपली पोल्यूशन एंड अदर थिंग वी हैव टूडे लेक्चर इज टोटली इंटायरली डिफरेंट वी हैव फोकस ऑन द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ इन्वायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स एट वर्क प्लेस it's maybe we are facing so many problem in the workplace how we, this uh, factors may be environmental air water noise and other things are impact to the work quality this is the one of the important now we have start your the presentation now just some sharing just a minute the slide is visible no sir not okay. yet okay okay just a minute just a minute
it is not visible ma'am so your screen is presenting but the presentation is not visible yeah 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 it just pressed off the window get to Now same situation. What about? Uh, yes, sir. It's coming now. Yes, sir. Your screen is presenting. You can just open your presentation now. Yes, sir. It is visible, all of you. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible, and okay. you can just open your presentation now. Yeah. Sir, it's closed now. It's closed down. Oh, sure. Just wait. Now it is visible, all of you. Uh, yes, sir. Now it is visible. Yes. Okay, yes, okay. sir. It is. Now uh, this is today uh, uh, presentation is basically entirely different from the other presentation. Uh, we are more focused upon the what are the impacts of the environmental impact factor of the workplace. Workplace where we have work, maybe we have spent the time and maybe the efficiency and other other thing may be hampered due to the some other activities due to the time. Maybe sometime you are feel not. AC is not working. You have maybe temperature is very high. Some pollution are there. Some water quality is not there. Maybe other noise pollution is there. Definitely, it's totally, totally affect on your the work culture or work system. And everybody know what is the environment. There's no need to discuss about the thing. Maybe it's a clubbing of of air, water, and land. And they basically they are all all the interlinked each other. If you remove water or air, a system is a, a your environment is incomplete because we cannot sustain maybe maybe hour two hour maybe days without all environmental component if you remove the water you can sustain for one or two days if you remove the air this is not a complete environment so this is the uh, this is about the uh, regarding environment and what is the workplace environment uh, where is the workplace environment which will refers to the where employees can be work uh, work on the particular area particular offices and uh, the offices and system they are where we are associated uh, depend of the work life they is also uh, depend upon the different situation if you're working in the field conditions this is the, your workplace is the field field area you're working in the industry your uh, workplace is the industry if you're working in the lab you're working in the office this is the this is they can be changed um, working conditions maybe sometimes what are the working condition hampered your the uh, complete influencing what are the factors in terms of the efficiency and other things? So maybe you are, maybe sometimes you are getting excessive noise. You are working in the noise, uh, we are in the industry and particular place they have a machine which are producing huge quantity of noise. Definitely you are maybe six or seven, or maybe you are working from a two or three, four hours, your complete cyclical or maybe other impact can maybe uh, affect on your bodies. With a long term, it can be affected. Maybe poor lighting, poor work, organization is also one of the major important and they have directly or indirectly affect to the employee and basically employee means that they have effect on your the functioning of what your working culture working system they have uh, affected uh, positive work environment if you see the what is, uh, if uh, the question arises what is positive work environment what is the negative work environment uh, it's a healthy maybe uh, in regarding what the healthy environment where we are uh, we are we are enjoy we can do the work very comfortably and the people are highly motivated uh, sometimes uh, the people the important things are in the particular post environment we have focused with the employee motivations and happiness so if we are um, the, this positive environment definitely they affect the productivity they have directly affect the productivity of work or this is the if your positive environment the person having a huge energy in the system 
so these are the they can if you are you are charged your like your mobile is charged then can, they can run up to the one day or two days if maybe discharge maybe slightly lower down near you know, the battery definitely your maybe system maybe uh, they have working time will be reduced so simply you have a more energy more work efficiency they have affect your the totally uh, productivity now environmental conditions and issues what are the major issues maybe uh, affecting your the your workplace and uh, those are associated the workers or employees and other things so basically one of the air quality issues if if you are working in the particular of uh, maybe industry there if air quality or if you are handling with the uh, air um, pollution system and the industry can produce maybe air pollution and maybe working particularly if any industry is there definitely they can produce maybe water air noise these are the three components as in a term of pollutions so these are uh, they are generating or if employees are associated with this one definitely they are exposed about the air quality issues maybe sometimes temperature you are working in the nearby the furnace definitely they have temperature extreme it's also affect um, maybe ma'am is telling about the, the 41 degree temperature so this is if we are raised the temperature in the like alwar your alwar city from uh, we are also belong from the Allahabad, the temperature more than 40 definitely we are we are not comfortable temperature one of one there is nowadays the key play role is that temperature uh, is 40 degree they have affect your the work style work culture work productivities so these are the affecting so we are comfortable we can sit in the ac room definitely you have sit in the ac room because we are getting lesser temperature and your work working efficiency will be increased so these are the issues always affect if affect the working and productivities and other things so water quality issues if your people are suffering from the water qualities and other issues related so definitely this is the one of the if people are suffering from the water bodies how can uh, they cannot work from the long time in the offices if, maybe sometimes people are suffering from fever definitely maybe they are maybe you're taking water outside and waterborne disease and you have maybe some some other stomach stomach um, infection is there maybe but these are also affect your the water and this is also associated with the water quality is to high noise high noise may be psychological effect on your the system and other circumstances it also is serious serious issue always reach and maybe this is the main important aspect we have um, considering in the working uh, environmental condition at a workplace uh, maybe sometime we have one of the word is work uh, workplace hazard uh, basically they have basically they have uh, maybe physical stress and exposure to the toxic metal they have we are considering in the work workplace hazard and maybe another uh, another point is unsafe work environment is also uh, maybe uh, it's not good for the employee and employee cannot perform if your workplace is unsafe for the environment definitely they have maybe physical condition and other thing definitely they have also um this is a one of the important factors uh you can see the what are the uh the pictures is very clear about the what are the influencing environment factor in the working environment if i in, if you're taking about the environmental factors we have uh, considering the these things these are important issues noise air quality water quality light and humidity are the important factors uh, from the your uh, working efficiency your system can be uh, they can uh, decrease or increase on on the basis of this uh, factor now we have we have discussed the what are the effect and what are the things factor are affecting your the uh, your your work work <coughs> work system or maybe in the workplace and efficiency so one important aspect is source and impact of environmental condition we if noise is there basically you know every uh, everybody know the, what is the environment what is the noise noise is always what are the limits they have increased the if noise maybe certain limit noise will be always expressed in the decibel maybe some places the noise is uh, uh, 40 decibel is allowable if the if you are raised the 40 50 60 definitely this is create the um, unwanted sound if any unwanted sound if you exceed the limit definitely this is unwanted and this is noise pollution is or noise uh, noise level is higher or noise pollution express maybe unwanted and undesirable sound and 
these are affecting the psychological and physiological problems. If your long time exposure is there, definitely they can produce the, uh, the two, two problem is very, very important. Uh, if in, uh, maybe sometime you are, uh, maybe noise can be irritated to, to the person, uh, maybe, or maybe they have uh, irritated person, maybe normal person, or maybe, uh, maybe other uh, healthy person also, they each and every person are associated if your uh, sound is more and more. If you are standing from the outside, and any, anybody plays sound maybe slowly and you have they increase the sound you cannot stand maybe part in the particular place maybe few minutes because this is the they have disturbing to your system so this is this is the main concern about in a workplace there's a noise and other thing is there definitely this is the impact on your the impact on your human health uh, some common sources of noise at the workplace. Uh, what are the main co common sources that not uh, workplace? It's maybe some workplace have a loud music. They are playing loud music, and the heavy machineries also producing the machineries are using from the industry in other places. They have the data. They have handled by the human being because they have producing huge sound. Uh, maybe transportation workplace. It's transportation moving from their office. Uh, your office is maybe nearby the road and the traffic movement is high and they are they are using horn and other thing definitely your concentration will be disturbed electrical tool circle maybe what are the electrical tool are using they have if people are maybe you can see the electrician are using the show machine and other thing and also that time you maybe one drill bit is if they are using definitely they have produced the huge sound from the minutes so these are the another issues also associated with the workplace vacular traffic everybody know we are moving every day we are moving from the house to the office we are using different different traffic mode or tra transportation system they have also generate the uh, uh, noise pollution household noise what are the the pollution as generated in the from the houses drill grinder if your machines are using maybe drill grinders and other things are using in the kitchens and other places so definitely with the one of the important aspect and construction site industrial site noise so these are the if you are most of the nowadays most of the um, project working maybe project are uh, ongoing projects maybe road construction building constructions and other construction is going on so definitely they have uh, the people as you said definitely uh, they are the employer employers are they're affecting due to the noise of generating and this industrial noise is basically one of the stationary source though the stationary prime uh, these are movable and immobile. This is the fixed source where we are generating the pollution. And if you see, this is a very standard. We are talking about the standard and limit. So we have very uh, know about the what are the standards. This standard laid by the CPCB Central Pollution Control Board. And they have from the Indian scenario, they have given the four areas. And what are in this area? What are the uh, noise are required? Basically, what are the noise level is required from the particular? Uh, you have always uh, if you are thinking an equivalent this is the noise level will be monitored by the two uh, from the noise meter and the, they have always give the value of l10 and line t l10 is basically the min <clears throat> the maximum noise level and l90 is a technical term but l90 l90 is the maybe um, minimum noise level and l, l equivalent uh, this is the we can report at the what is the equivalent level from the particular time so they have reported 75 all you have keep in the mind all a uh, noise will be reported in the decibel if you're talking about decibel then this is the uh, this is the unit of the noise is decibel so if, if you are the you can see so uh, this is the two thing one thing is maybe uh, they have cpcb has guidelines is given from the particular noise level standard 6 a.m to 9 p.m maybe early morning 6 to 9 p.m the they have entirely different from the from the uh, evening time. Uh, this is a morning time. They have a level is maybe 75 decibel. They have a level limit of 75 decibel. And the night time that you can see this is a change of five decibel. Maybe night time in the industrial area they have noise will be a level up to the 70 decibel. The so same place the noise level will be different from and uh, morning and evening. Morning will after nine to six p.m. They you have required 70 decibel and this is the morning time 75 in like commercial area they have this is commercial area you can also find out the uh, time and other things because 
commercial area where maybe uh, more of the offices um, like uh, <clears throat> um, malls um, markets are there so that sound level be slightly they have reduced uh, 65 and 55 night time definitely in a commercial areas sound level will be reduced because most of the shop are closed most mall are the closed so these are the very lesser quantity and residential area uh, is uh, slightly lower maybe you have see 10 10 decibel decreasing up to the residential area and this is the 55 and 45 in the night time and silent zone like silent zone is a hospital um, courts in the particular region or area they have given the 50 and 40 decibel limit in uh, noise level standard if you see the adverse health effect of the noise uh, everybody know uh, maybe first we are thing uh, major effect on the hearing loss we are using um, if you are high noise you have sound and we are sometime we are wearing maybe uh, uh, nowadays people are using earbuds and other thing definitely you have play they have if you are increase the sound definitely they have this sound level will be harm to the your the ear they have mentioned red color is ready if you see and put it your the you can use the earbuds then you have increased the sound of the uh, mobile definitely they have they have connected with the bluetooth and they have showed red color it means that this danger if you are using maybe using this 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 level definitely after the some time not some time maybe longer time you have uh, facing the problem of hearing maybe when sound if if uh, this is the one important 70 decibel maybe if sound level crosses 70 decibel it become noise for the uh, noise for the ear if 70 level, level is increasing up to the uh, it's a mark and they have this is also harm from the other ear and and if you if you increase 70 to 80 decibel with the continuation uh, they have damaging your the effect damaging you can see the damaging effect of your ear but it's a continuous if it's not a one day it maybe you are using from the loud sound maybe loud loudness is there so then you have effect on your the ear another maybe if you raise uh, maybe raise the 100 decibel maybe this is a you have um, damages but it's irreparable maybe we <clears throat> this is the uh, highly dangerous and irreparable and they have permanent hearing losses are there so this is the main uh, <clears throat> and in a world level yeah noise uh, is the noise uh, noise induced hearing losses is the one of the uh, considered 15 most serious health problem in the world maybe if a list of the 1 to 14 15 is there maybe 20 in a 15th number is the most serious health problem in the world related to the uh, and noise induced hearing losses if you what is the early sign if you if anybody can know i have not feeling uh, sir i have no problem about the high noise definitely then you can check you can go through the check if the person having some symptom definitely go for the uh, consultation of the doctors another thing maybe ringing in the air if you're ringing in the air maybe sound are we have removed the earbuds and you can feel some ringing uh, this is the one of the uh, early sign of the hearing losses and inability of hear soft and high pitches sound this is a you they have not differentiate between the high pitches and no, low pitches this is a one other aspect maybe difficulty to hearing maybe sometime difficulty to hearing telephone or if, if anybody is pushing your doorbell you cannot hear maybe another but another person who tell us yes, sir you maybe some person is pressing your the doorbell maybe some people are calling but definitely one of the uh, early sign uh, these are the factors the few factors uh, points are uh, checked and you can find out that it's a hearing losses um, problem or maybe maybe some type of poor uh, cognitive functions if you uh, you have continue with the this one then you have a this is your you can you are think thinking another process is also affect because sometimes where people are uh, uh, recalling another thing they have not remembered the thing this also um, make one of the major concentration is the another issues and major problem is maybe if you see the cardiovascular disease uh, they if you have, they have raised the blood if you have not sleeping properly if you now uh, due to the noise pollution definitely your blood pressure will be after one or two days you can find the blood pressure will rise because body metabolism is disturbed due to the high noise level or noise pollution so these are the major impacts on your the body and maybe if your high pressure is there maybe certainly they have maybe continuous process uh, they, if you are continuous going on definitely they have um, create the uh, cardiovascular problem 
So this is the, which will not see the very, in a specific, uh, you can see very specific manner. They have effect on totality, effect on your, the human health, human bodies, maybe either in a term of high blood pressure or maybe other issues. Uh, so these are the mean concentration. And maybe sometimes this is abnormal changes. If you're not sleeping in a proper way or maybe you're, you have continuous in the sound system, definitely they have pre create the cardiovascular disease in the long term basis. Uh, sleeping disturbance, one of the major cause you have a uh, you are not a good sleep. If you are you have continuous touch with the noise pollution or your house will be nearby the road and uh, um, train and maybe near railway stations and other thing. So you can uh, always you can find uh, maybe noise noise level or noise pollution you can find a particular area maybe commercial area you can also get it the more noise pollution noise pollution so these are the also effect on the sleep disturbance uh, maybe sometimes they have trouble communication if you are uh, they have also 50 to 60 years simply does not allow to people are maybe people are um, discussing about uh, some any any issue other with that decibel of 50 to 60 decibel it's also one of the major uh, trouble uh, this is a problem if you are not hearing hearing problem is there so people can talk in a maybe in a high pitches but definitely they have produced the high noise level mental health problem definitely the psychological physiological the if all the points are considering they have ultimately affect on your mental health problem and due to the increase or elevated stress level due to the this um, and people have behavior violent behavior maybe you have maybe sometime uh, they have produced maybe due to the this issues also create stress problem they have uh, changed the behavior of the human being so these are the things are happening but you can you can see this art thing it's not a artificial they have basically associated with the high noise level these because these things are happening in the particular places maybe commercial places maybe industrial places maybe residential places so these are the point are considering and you can see that the picture is very clear about the what are the uh, what are the level you can see um, if you um, you can see the uh, how to justify this is that is this decibel level is uh, reference point from the which uh, which uh, which thing which are the points are associated with one so if you see the ticking of watch if if watch is moving they can produce 20 decibel uh, this is a whisper is if quite living room is there definitely 40 decibel rain if raining is there they have produced the 50 decibel uh, this is the 50 or 55 decibel as per the WHO World Health Organization conversation between two person is maybe 60 decibel if you're talking about the two person the conversation is no we have they say it's depend upon how much distance so there's so much several causes are there passenger car maybe 70 decibel Telephone ring, if you agree, not people are using nowadays, is telephone is maybe off, in this point nowadays is obsolete. So this is the way people are using mobile phone. The mobile phone decibel will be changed. If you are reading slow mode, maybe ring, ringing mode with the high and low, the definitely they can increase the level of the noise. Trucks, maybe 90 decibel. Rock band, they have 110 decibel. And this is the aircraft on takeoff. If the aircraft is takeoff from this is the 120. You can see um, little risk if uh, if a decibel uh, if you are talking about a very slow slow uh, talking about very uh, very specific and very uh, you can uh, say about the if two person talking in in the very nearby the uh, how much distance or distance is also affect on the uh, level of noise. So if you are very near, then definitely noise level will be will be reduced. So if conversation we have you go for the 39, 70, 70 and car is maybe 80, dec 80 decibel. This is the one of the issues. Uh, in G this is a risk. If you are more, more you are going out, outward 80 decibel, this is can be created as a risk as a injurious. If you are go for the habit track and 120 chain shop, they have producing one 890 and 120. This is the, this is a maybe in an orange color. This is about the injurious and highly injurious maybe. Uh, rivet hammer and jet engines are producing huge quantity but you cannot interact with the jet and other system but if you are interacting particular places if you are 140 decibel they are highly injurious to the human being 
air quality maybe uh, air quality is now this is the second parameter second environmental uh, in the uh, in the particular workplace is the air quality air quality nowadays we have justify the air quality in two way and uh, maybe uh, not you can express the air quality in, in two way one is the outdoor air pollution and indoor air pollution nowadays we are very very focused and most of the companies are working uh, from the air the cleaning of the your air pur air purifier they are putting in the houses sir this is the they have removed the corona and they have cleaned the houses and other they different different aspect and they have you can find out that you can search in the google and you can go air purifier you can got at so many things so this is the indoor air pollution outdoor air pollution we are this generated from the transportation system you are generated from the industry you are generated from the other issue, place issues they have con considering as the outdoor air pollution outdoor pollution may be basically uh, they have basically in uh, already told ki this is the outside and outside we have considering the parameters particulate matter this particulate matter what is the particle size of the partic partic particulate matter may be this is pm 2.5 pm 2. Uh, sorry pm pm 10 this particulate matter they are generating from the burning of the or maybe fuel of all the, uh, in in the industry they are using furnaces so they are generating maybe particulate matter particular if you're burning if you're running by uh, running yeah you're going for the car and other things definitely the particulate matter in the system so these are the another issues and also uh, they are basically if lighter particle they are basically suspended air because maybe in suspension air maybe is a lighter is very lighter and if if your uh, particle size is more then definitely due to the gravitational force they have settled down in the bottom uh, particulate pollution may be due to the motor vehicle wood burning heater and industries are the major contributor and dust storm particle maybe sometimes dust storm is the one of the major particle pollution can reach extremely high in the concentration due to the such this dust storm maybe the dhul bari aadiya chalti so you can find out the uh, you can dust storm is there and they have increased the particle pollution in the system on the basis of particulate matter have been divided uh, i have already told this pm 10 and pm 2.5 uh, this is the diameter of micrometer or this is the particle size diameter is there if uh, if you are pass through the throat and nose and enter into the lung if particle size is more than this one and this is a small enough and this is the they enter into the in into in, enter into the lungs and they, they can affect heart and lung the system they have system is completely true and due to the deposition of particles and they have created the serious injury or health issues due to the particle matter if uh, you can see particle matter 2.5 is diameter particle size is um, 2.5 micrometer or less and particle are also small and they get deep into the lungs very small and they have if particle is very very small they have entered in the most uh, uh, maybe uh, if particle is bigger size definitely maybe uh, sometime some uh, sometimes they not enter in the system maybe if it's smaller they have inhale and they go to the inside so this is about the and they can be produced with the long time effect if they have contact with the pm 2.5 and the long period time it will take and cause adverse health effect it's a if uh, if you are associated with the 2.5 particle size then definitely is a long term it will take and they have effect on the health health effect short term exposure what are the short term this two type of exposure always we have uh, from the in case of pollution so what are the short term and what are long term maybe immediately uh, short term means within within short short time uh, if you are uh, can uh, if you are this is particles and other things are in into the air that if you are going from any places you're wearing it's not wearing glass definitely some particulars goes down your eyes definitely they and uh, the irritation is started and nose and throat may be also affected so asthma lung disease and chronic by uh, this is bronchitis is also one of the um, they have a short term effect heart attack may be because they have air pollution can be created heart they have disturbed the heartbeat and other things then due to the variation of this one so this is the another issues and due to the uh, another is the increase in the short term uh, process hospital admission and premature death due to the decree increase disease of respiratory and cardiac because most of the cases nowadays are reported due to the hospital premature death because people are suffering from the issues are related to the respiratory translate name is the clean you have find out that 
during COVID time, people are not suffering from moving, uh, the lungs are choked and other things. So definitely the, their oxygen carrying capacity is very low. Definitely. It's a, it's a, uh, maybe if in a, in a, in maybe in another position they have, uh, sometimes they have create the premature death and <clears throat> in the, if they choke the cardiovascular system. Long term maybe reduce lung infections and development of cardiovascular, uh, development, long term exposure, maybe development of cardiovascular and respiratory disease, increase rate of disease progression. Maybe this is a long term, maybe short term within, within a span time and maybe long term, maybe they have more and more losses. If you see the what are if, if parameters we have talking about the if uh, maybe these are maybe indoor we are talking about indoor or outdoor pollution both indoor maybe in offices or industry areas and a particular um, in a household these are the things are considered if you are associated with the noise um, NO2 basically what are the source you know automobile exhaust is the the vehicular are moving into into the um, into the roadside they have creating exhaust maybe what are bur uh, the burning of the fuel uh, fuel they have uh, out they have uh, this is the they known as the automobile exhaust and uh, they have also one of the major source of the nitrogen dioxide and health effect is directly to is very important point respiratory illness if you are associated with the nitrogen dioxide lung disease and irritation to eyes are the major impact and this you can see this is the uh, you are getting where the another source is the coal diesel and petrol burning of the petrol diesel and other things it also create is the source major sources and carbon monoxide everybody know we burn this is the due to the um, uh, very dangerous and this is a very colorless and odorless uh, gas uh, sometimes people are using in they burn in the coal into the room and closed uh, room is closed so most of the death and most of the casualties are happen most of the places uh, what they are they, they basically the oxygen in the rooms they have burned and this is the carbon monoxide react with the hemoglobin and they have slowed down the, over the process so this is the another major causes of the um, important uh, points carbon monoxide and they are getting from automobile exhaust cigarette smoking incomplete burning of fossil fuel it's also major uh, major points in uh, to producing the carbon monoxide. And what are the health effects? Uh, basically, leads to uh, the health effect is lead to decreasing oxygen capacity of blood. But this, this is the one they have. If carbon monoxide react with the hemoglobin, definitely they have creating major bigger problem because they have decreased the capacity decreasing the oxygen carrying capacity of blood if decreasing the oxygen carrying capacity of blood this is the maybe people are maybe slightly the maybe 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 few few hours they have maybe in position to maybe collapse uh, collapse the complete system so maybe the another is the causing difficulty of breathing and if you have high doses of the carbon monoxide they have collapse and coma and these are the major and they have complete damages your the brain cell if you are associated with the carbon monoxide carbon dioxide may be source is the maybe coal wood and petroleum and basically the effect is co this is the causes and respiratory disorder and suffocation is the major causes of carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide maybe uh, this is a, if you are represent how to know color this is the gas and what are the uh, what are the system is there maybe this is the irritating gas and basically sulfur dioxide may be react with the uh, in the atmosphere where moisture is can present and they if uh, so2 and react with the s2o then become s 2 so4 and uh, is this a major cause of the acid rain and high level of high concentrated acid may be impact on the human being as well as totally crops and other system microorganism also are affected due to in <clears throat> due to the rain acid rain uh, indoor air pollution is the main concern about the what are the common air pollution in the home i doesn't know well, uh, this is the uh, this is the main things and the major point we are not getting the things what are the major pollutant found in your the homes so definitely carbon monoxide source what are the source like uh, leaking chimney and furnaces are the major source uh, and gas stoves generators and tobacco smoking are the major source of the carbon monoxide and what are the effects? Maybe head dizziness and confusion, 
and nausea if everything is not related to their health problem this is the maybe happening due to the excess excess concentration of carbon monoxide in the house so second maybe particulate matters is also second point and basically we are getting from the cooking burning of candle use of fireplace cigarette smoking wood burning and other things then you can what are the effect you can see the eye nose and throat irritation is there and respiratory infection and bronchitis is the another problem if they have felt the bronchitis if your deposition of the particles and other thing they have they have complete uh, swell the bronchitis and they have the if bronchitis is well definitely the people are not taking uh, complete uh, breathing they have start the breathing problem and respiratory problem as uh, respiratory associated problem and maybe long time is a cancer if uh, this is a one of the major important aspect particulate matter may be less than 2.5 if uh, inhalation is what are the small blood vessel is inflammation is there and particulate of the site can cause version and they have also effect if you're living you're taking two point less than 2.5 uh, particulate matter and they have creating the cardiovascular disease asthma and in long in long term basis they have a lung cancer you can see that if the situation will be if going on a particular uh, system you can if uh, air pollution will be high in the indoor maybe if indoor maybe it refers to the household and offices the same you can see the pictures are maybe one of the major major effect on people are wearing in the mask and maybe some uh, devices to control the uh, pollution to intake the clean air and the second picture is maybe or the industries are burning because they are the stress resources they are standing and nearby the area and people are suffering from the different disease due to the air pollution uh this is the one of the given the what is the standard ambient air quality standard laid by cpcv and basically central pollution control board what are the allowable limit if you see if you are going from the any standard they have you have required the what are the quantity quantity of quantum is required maybe this is micro uh, this 50 micro <clears throat> micrograms uh this is the uh, this is about your uh, 50 and 80 sulfur dioxide is allowable maybe annual means key yearly the data is if you're taking from the third maybe every day and you have just getting the all the reading and divide by the 365 you get the what are the annual concentration is there if 24 hours you are measuring maybe 80 this is the 80 um, and this is for the industrial residential rural areas are these are the values are given maybe annual maybe if you see the 40 uh, particular matter 60 to 80 but it depends upon the what is the particular size so this is the annual and 24 hour. if you are monitoring for, uh, you can take the decision within the what is the situation of the annual annual means we are considering from the 24 hour annual uh, for the sorry this is the 24 hours we are considering another issues are related to the annual annual means yearly one is the end data one is the 24 hour data and they are different maybe uh, they have given the value maybe not more than 80 and 40 if you are taking about the 24 hour it's a higher value and uh, if you take the annual this is a uh, average value is not more than maybe sometimes 100 maybe 200 maybe but next day year 20 50 the total average is less than 50 40 in 60 in case of different para pollutants uh, you can easily nowadays uh, most of the places air air quality index are measuring the quality uh, quality level if you see uh, scale will be different maybe higher scale or lower scale if your range will be 0 to 50 if air quality index value is 0 to 50 it's good and uh, this is this is the color is green maybe quite it's a good you can uh, the safer side if 51 to 100 this is a moderate and moderate is given is yellow color maybe green or <clears throat> moderate is quite good maybe if your index value is 101 to 150 unhealthy for sensitive group maybe sometime people are immunity and other thing are slightly weaker then you have a go for the orange category if your index value is 150 to 200 unhealthy and this is a red mark if red mark means it's dangerous then afterward what color is given if you always remember within 200 it's maybe quite maybe 150 is up to the quite good if if you are going from the 151 to 200 
this is maybe a rent may be unhealthy this is the unhealthy afterward all are the unhealthy maybe the color is purple and maroon is hazardous so these are the if the scale of 0 to 500 maybe 150 up to the safer then slightly variation in the unhealthy 150 to 200 uh, 150 to 200 and afterward 500 this also uh, they have given the severe what are the effect minimal impact uh, what the minor breathing decomfort if you are 51 to 100 this is a minor breathing effect or de maybe decomfort or sensitive people Bra maybe if you are go for the 100 to 101 to 200 there's a moderate and breathing decomfort and people with the lung asthma and other other disease if you are this is 100 to 200 this is a the, this is a starting point of breathing and asthma and other heart disease a uh, breathing decomfort most people on the prolonged exposure maybe poor maybe if long exposure is started from the scale of 201 to 300 and respiratory illness or prolonged exposure is very poor about the particular and uh, 401 to 500 may be severe effect healthy people are seriously impact with existing disease so these are the points uh, with the scale uh, always you know what are the scale are uh, good and air quality index can be easily calculated by different method and mode is there if value of uh, if you know what are the values or what are input is required definitely it will very helpful from the calculating uh, you can see the uh, with very clear about the pollution map of the india you can find out the red most of the faridabad um, <clears throat> maybe this is the air quality with the with the month september the data will be september to january 16. so in the <clears throat> september most of the places the starting maybe slightly climate change is there maybe slightly climate maybe uh, colder uh, then the range will be slightly uh, slight in the within the permissible range green and yellow is a very good sign october is quite good there's no yellow and green is there but november most of the places may be nearby the delhi faridabad agra maybe you can say the ncr region or most of the industrial area this is the they have range will be increases and december you can find out the um, because some certain limitation maybe some quality maybe in uh, is minimized uh, minimized maybe due to the certain certain uh, certain rules and regulations and maybe odd and even numbers may be started or other things may affect your the data but most of Faridabad and other regions are having a having a pollutions so these are the things uh, it's very clear about the air quality in North India cities two to time worse than south maybe south quality is, is better than uh, from the other north side and bangalore has a you can see has the cleanest air among the cities studies so these are the points are very very important about this concern of the pollution <clears throat> this is pollution map of india uh this is uh, maybe the best measure or to decrease air pollution in the workplace is maybe increase ventilations use of filters and banning smoking in working place these are the points we have always considered in the particular areas and if you are following increase the ventilation the crossing of the air and other things also getting use of the filters nowadays we are proposing most of us are proposing filters and other machineries are there so they have also quite good for the offices and if you are getting banning of smoking in the workplace most of the places um, smoking is banned if you are anybody is taking um, smoking is going for the smoking definitely the, the effect on the particular reason and other thing so this is the long time what are the impacts are going this is the important aspect and now come to the water quality issues also uh, important aspect uh, we are associated with the air water and noise in the particular workplaces and if your quality is not good in the term of biological and, and physical chemical and biological this is this is about the uh, serious indicator from the particular area because if uh, this maybe water is maybe biologically uh, polluted definitely you are maybe if taking water in the office is another thing definitely you are maybe maybe sometimes the affected due to the poor water quality uh, this is the several aspect we are also considering the whole oxygen and bacteria level what are the amount called and what are the amount material suspended in the water like turbidity and other things if water is clear definitely if you are officers your water is maybe size slightly turbid you will not never take the water definitely this is the one of the this is the indicator can be due to the turbidity 
if water is turbid water is there definitely uh, it may be some some suspended particle it may, some suspended particles are there and they have created the turbidity testing for the water quality maybe the different different way and what is the sample the example uh, this is a system and you can go for the offices on going monitoring systems and other things so you can take the sample and deliver and track and perform analysis if you are going for the this slide can give the what are the um, system we can adopt from the uh, analyze and always tracking of the what is the quality maybe monthly or time maybe 15 days you can go for the analysis and you, on, you can find out that if anything are happening or change in the water quality definitely it can be uh, improved by the different mode and system environmental water quality parameter we have always considering few parameters maybe color order temperature are the physical basically color order uh, turbidity and are the <coughs> very very important factors and this is about your the chemical and the chemical properties we have more focus on pH, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, nitrate, and phosphorus and pesticide. The biological is very, very important in case of the uh, water board disease. We have coliform, pickled coliform, and pathogens and viruses. This is a table. Uh, they have given uh, table number one. It is a standard for the drinking water. Maybe ISI, ICMR, and WHO is given the standard norm from the maybe uh, Indian. ISO 10500, we are always following the standard specification for the water quality related issues. Indian Council of Medical Research is also one of the major agencies. They are monitoring the uh, what is the level and other thing. And WHO is the ultimate. They have, they have uh, throughout the global, we can follow the standard. They have given the what are the parameter. Uh, you can see this is we have talking about the TDS. This is the uh, this is a uh, you can see. In the five permissible limit is 500. Permissible limit is WHO is giving the permissible limit is 500, and you can imagine this is the E access the limit is 1500. So this is a player key player role. Maybe we, they have allowable limit. If you are world TDS is in the water, you are RO. If more than 500, 500 to up to 1500. Definitely, these are the safer mode. So you all always care about. We are we're taking the water. If anybody can take your uh, TDS, maybe 300. You can use from the uh, RO and other things. Most of the offices are using, and they have decreased the level of RO because the taste and order and mineral content. They're never adding any mineral. Maybe maybe some agencies are quoting their mineral. We are adding. But these are the major. But if your water is 500 to 150, 1,500, definitely can you are the safer mode you are in safe mode and you are there's no worry about this one so these are the parameters and what are the limits uh, these are given maybe sometimes limit will be changed maybe some places some other thing will be changed so we are considering about the icmr ISA, isi and who standards are the major import this so chemical everybody knows this is a ph uh, it's not a it's a scale of i uh, potential of hydrogen and they have uh, this is maybe a scale 0 to 14 if we are 0 to 6 or 5 6.5 it's the maybe acidic and 6.5 to 7.5 is the neutral and um, and more than 7.5 to 14 this is known as the alkaline range so these are the acidic water that what is the effect of the acidic water maybe sometimes we people doesn't know what is the effect so this is meticate uh, this is a uh, metallic sour taste of drinking water so like metallic so uh, you can feel your order uh, you can taste it like this but it means the water is acidic and blue green staining of sink other household fixtures nearby you can find other if you think your green structure is there maybe blue green is green maybe standing is there so it may be your water will be acidic effect of alkaline water bitter testing bitter testing coffee you are using for the acidic water maybe alkaline water this is a it's a bitter taste you can feel from the coffee scalp building household plumbing is also one of the important decrease efficiency of electrical water heaters if your water is not heating properly it means it's not a uh, blame to the voltage another thing it's also you can go for the 
uh, due to the alkaline of the water is an important aspect due to the because deposition are going on particular if, to, if this is very clear about two day dissolve solid uh, maybe tedious in the per uh, this is this is a ppm part per million parts per million if ppm is a ring uh, ideal form they have they have ideal drinking from the water from ro microfiltration dissolution unit uh, this is if you zero to 50 if carbon filtration if you go for the uh, 500 this carbon filtration mountain is breaking or aquifers and uh, this is the tedious point on the if mountain spring coming from the river is very uh, river and aquifers they have 50 to 500 marginally acceptable maybe you have a uh, there's no and uh, there's no problem high tedious water from the tap or mineral water maybe they are putting from the spring so a, a us epa uh, this is called the uh, as for the US EPA, maximum contaminant level is more than 500. So this is of if you have 500 more than, then maybe W if the different maybe environmental protection agency is given the if greater than maybe uh, 500 people, maybe slightly some effect. But in case of WHO, this 500 to 1500, this is given. Alkalinity is a you in a water if water have a um, more alkaline and they have allowable limit is a 200 milligram and uh, water can be high or low in pH in fact water can be high or low in pH but it's too high or too low in case of this is effect and this is also greater alkalinity is maybe acid reflux problem is there maybe cancer blood pressure and diabetes uh, due to the alcohol you are taking alkaline of water hardness hardness always creates the maybe hardness causes silent heart attack this is if you're more hard water you're taking maybe not maybe longer time they have depositions and other things and they have raped the water and the real water the water can be react in the human being and they have reported in maybe some maybe cases of the silent heart attack maybe several causes are there maybe one of the one cause maybe in the hardness is there heat and temperature exposure at the workplace if you can see if you more heat you cannot sit in the particular place and this definitely it's affect your the work uh, work quality work productivity and totality totality in the work uh, what you have you cannot concentrate you cannot do the work in a proper manner if it is more so this is another aspect we have considering um, uh, where we are getting from the outdoor occupation basically the construction road repair and what are the agriculture agriculture activities and we are also getting the laundry, restaurant, kitchens, and canneries. A high humidity and heat heat burden is there. In industry, you have deal more and more heat are there. Maybe heat stress. Maybe heat stress. Maybe overall, what a heat stress is a net overall a heat load which worker may be exposed. Maybe certain temperature they can uh, they can sustain. If you are getting 45 degrees, it's okay, 50, 55. Maybe after some temperature, you cannot tolerate so this is the heat stress and combined as a contributor is to the they can lead with the environmental factor air temperature humidity air movement is also play a key role and heat is just working in one which can be potentially over warm body and able to deal with the heat so if this is the one of the major this is a heat structure can also affect your bodies and they have also affect the availability and they have body Maybe uh, this is a, if a more and more heat is there, definitely it's directly or indirectly hamper with the system or working, uh, working culture. And most uh, you can see most of the people uh, when air temperature is in most of the you can find out the some most of the country outside the temperature is maybe 20 degree 20. This you can uh, you can say very uh, very good temperature. So these are the also one of the important aspects. They can enhance the quality of, of working qualities. So this is the this is the main concern and if your temperature will be 20 to 27 degree and uh, humidity will be 30 to 60 degree when and you are maybe if more humidity you, you are not feel comfortable either then if humidity will be lesser one one of the uh, you you can find uh, better better system uh, this is a maybe uh, people are most of the officers they are sitting in the particular fan and cooling system and if you are you can find out the humidity is more then definitely they, they every time they have they are not getting comfortable so this is another issues related from the humidity and 
this is about the healthy human body maintain internal temperature around 37 degree if your body will be uh, perfect and they have maintaining the 37 degree temperature this is called healthy human body if uh, maybe sometime moderately maybe hot environment uh, if you are maybe excessive maybe temperature will be excessive and other things they also due to the outer environment or maybe inside maybe some changes are there they have also um, this is for your the health issues related and also indirectly or directly affect your the body uh, total body system and at a workplace or maybe house any industries uh, what are the effect on the heat on the body uh, basically uh, when the air temperature or humidity rises above the range and they have to start this is the starting with the discomfort if you are not feeling comfortable this is the first problem arises and uh, second is the more heat causes more health problems if more heat they have creating health problem and basically if you are more we are not exposed more heat that definitely it's create the major problem to the human being and if you're creating the problem the performance is also affected increase increase irritability and <clears throat> irritability, uh, uh, irritability is also one of the you can irritate and other things are happening loss of concentration if you are not more a heat exposure is there so this also uh, stress one they have created the stress and mental basically mental stress and concentration if mental is more and this is the uh, your the lead you are losing the your the concentration so this is the main things you can see this is a picture it solutions and what are the things uh, maybe headache, fatigue weakness skin moist and maybe sometime anxiety and confusion are there causes if you are more and more it food intake is required heat exposure activities they have basically you have required and body temperature will be goes down so these are the these are the heat uh, he related to the heat issues heat. Uh, second and uh, next point is the humidity exposure is also one of them uh, major instance and we have humidity can of course your the imply sweet more or desire in air can if you are in more humidity you can move for the you can uh, humidity maybe if you complete humidity and you can if you move from the humid place to the ac room you are more comfortable definitely your work will be immediately uh, enhanced or maybe other system uh, your body will be more comfortable so these are the these are major major important issues related to the humidity and another the light condition at the work maybe if this is a major important aspect light is also one of the maybe high every how maybe i don't know how many people i know what are the uh, uh, how much uh, uh, calvin we are using and the light what are the light cold light with the daylight what is the yellow light these are the things uh very very clear about this one if your high cooler uh color temperature may be four six double zero calvin or more appear blue white and are called cool or daylight color if you are if you can if you are go, uh, go for a purchasing of the uh, bulb and maybe led bulbs or tubes they are mentioned what are the cool light or which are the daylight are there Maybe mid range color temperature will be 3100 to 4600 appear cool white. If you want cool white, the range is 3100 to 4600. Lower color temperature, maybe we have called warm light, they have to less than up to the 3000K. Uh, maybe um, other lighting, maybe 2000K is considered a warm color, and maybe they have a typical sunny day in about 5000K to is considered cool, cool. Uh, color lights so th the color light also you can put it in the your the room and other thing so the color is also affect maybe light is also affected maybe sometimes you can during that bulb and other using they have creating the temp they have increased the temperature so now th this is the uh, another aspect we have also considering how, how lighting affects productivity if you can see the fire is 2000 kelvin it's warmer than sunset is 4000 k and daylight is 5000 k and over cost winter day is maybe 700 if you intimate use in the uh, basically where um, this light mid range welcome uh, but it's still cool enough to promote alertness this is a conference room we are using about the 4000 to 5000 k Kelvin because we are the academician we are sitting in the conference room we are using the mid range of the light use brainstorming rooms is also the cooler one and this is the range maybe goes to the 4000 to 7000 
So these are the things are always considering about the related to the eyes. Uh, one thing, uh, maybe overall, overall we have what I have discussed now. Uh, what are the deaths by the contamination? Uh, this is a one of the six deaths due to contamination of the air, water, and or workplace. So these are the is a very, very, very important aspect. So air maybe air particulate this is this goes to the four point two household maybe two point nine and maybe slightly water maybe zero point eight occupational is very less and unsafe sanitation and safe source is one point three. They uh, this is the death by the contamination from the other birth places. So these are the range is very clear about the particular healthy environment workplace approach. What are the approach we can adopt it? We can use maybe green building and other concept and could maybe you now lead to the increased quality of work. Maybe have provide lesser and if you are increase the productivity, you have always considering the system which system you are adopting. You have ambient system. Maybe if your employee is affected due to the any diseases, definitely they have two or three employees. Their work will be hampered. So better we can we can provide the better environment. We have better environment. We have considering the Air quality is issues, water quality is issues, noise pollution issues, maybe humidity, maybe heat, and other issues always considering in the system. So we have such we are working on the particular particular area. So what are the measures we have taken to control the pollutions in the particular your the workplace and how to prevent? This is how to prevent by your this is uh, how to prevent and um, side, um, or minimize the Pollution level. So these are the very important alarming points. Because we are working, we are not thinking about we are very safe in the way in the room or we are very safe in the house, we are safe in the industry. Not inside inside pollution is always very, very injurious to the human health. So these are these points are always considering and we have creating uh, with the way to create healthy home workplace with considering all the major points and you, if you are go for them clean and comfortable offices places definitely your your productivity will be increases you are comfortable comfortable uh, comfortable so you are more comfortable to the work and to you have give the more time you have a more working efficiency so these are the and you are more interact with the colleague uh, you are taking, you are in the positive and uh, positive mood and positive attitude so these are the very very important yeah, overall summary we have this uh, system we are discussing about the workplace of the environment basically we are focusing out uh, we have in the, if you go for the proper manner product system definitely we have reduced the cost uh, maybe edited maybe if you are saying your reply is very good and they have the free from all the environmental pollutions or issues definitely it can be your productivity will be increased this is but it's a minor because uh, uh, in the offices imply is the backbone if you are they are working day and night if you are getting an ambient temperature ambient system definitely they have increased your the turnover and maybe others other things these are the one of the major aspects we have always considering from the and you can always provide you have always promote the health related issues and what are the health consequences are occurring due to the due to the issues are generated in the offices maybe we are because health is a very very important everybody is concerned about the health nobody uh, so these are the consider we are considering the point if these factors are considering you have uh, within the within the limit and with we have designed like uh, like to have how to control or how to minimize the solution level definitely they affect your the effect or the quality and they have increased that uh, this is increased by your system thank you thank you so much uh, thank you dr nas for such an elaborate and beautiful lecture any questions please raise your hand so we can unmute you from here uh, Dr. Nath, I would uh, ask you to look into uh, the chat box and see how much appreciation is there for you. Pardon? Any questions? Muskan, on the chat box, so I can see the questions. 
on the chat box please uh dr nath please share your ppt with us because we are having so much request saying that they want to have your ppt so please share with us and with your kind permission we will share it with our delegates sure sure we have changed some slightly change and i will provide if there are no questions dr nath i have a question for you <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it is not related with this but uh, Uh, since I'm the I'm a pesticide toxicologist and I have special affection for water, so I will again take you towards the water if you permit me. Please. Okay. So it is very wisely being said that the third world war will be on water. Yeah. Just I want to know your views on that. No, no, definitely, definitely. Uh, world war, maybe third, maybe the, the, this is the one point. Water scarcity is one of the major problem, and water pollution. most of the play most of the country is suffering from the water scarcity and second is the water pollution if you are not right. properly because uh, it's very clear about uh, uh, you can in a very simple example i will explain if everybody how much water will uh, use per day can you tell me anybody how much quantity of water we have used for per day for a human being then easy to calculate i will explain the mathematical way एक आदमी कितना पानी यूज करता है पर डे सर वो तो मैंने कभी कैलकुलेट ही नहीं किया वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है तो वर्ल्ड वाल तो यही से कंट्रोल होगी सर आप बताइए अमूमन एज पर द एज पर द स्टैंडर्ड एज पर बिकॉज़ ये डिपेंड करता इफ यू इट डिपेंड अपॉन द मेजर मेट्रो सिटीज में है आप किस एरिया में रह रहे हैं इसके ऊपर बहुत डिपेंड करता है तो एक द गवर्नमेंट गाइडलाइंस they have calculating and they have designing the structure on the basis of ki bhai 100 liter se lekar ke 150 liter hum ye mante 150 se 200 liter ki kya ka consumption hota hai because we are taking water 3 to 4 liter per day is very clear pani hum peete hain 3 se 4 liter chalte hain khana banate hain wo bhi aapke hisse mein hai kisi dusre hisse mein nahi hai theek hai teesri cheez aap aap kahin bhi ja rahe hain matlab toilet use karte hain washing use karte hain to aap in sab ko jodenge to wo quantity aa jati hai Two or three bucket you are using. So this is the maybe one bucket two hundred twenty liters ki hai. So sixty liters to aap aise drain out karte. Two bar agar washing karne gaye to bata laga aapne ek to twenty liter. So totality ki ye jo formula bana wo karib thirty five liter se two hundred liter. ठीक है ये आपका water है. Actual में consumption हमारा जो पानी पीने में दो से तीन तीन से चार liter की बात करते हैं. तो अगर one fifty liter हमारा per day का consumption है per person. तो एक city में आप मान लिया अलवर आप अलवर जैसे शहर में रहते हैं तो आप ये सोच सकते हैं कि वहाँ population क्या होगी? अलवर ही आगे है तो मैं उसी का लूंगा छोटा एग्जाम्पल मेरे लिए कैलकुलेशन भी आसान होगा सर अलवर लीजिए आप बिल्कुल क्योंकि अगर आठ लाख सिंपली आठ लाख पॉपुलेशन है अलवर की हम ये मान लेते हैं कि उसको सिंपल सिंपल में वो तो 100 लीटर आप अलवर में पानी दे रहे तो 8 लाख मल्टीप्लाई बाय आप 100 कर लीजिए आप पा जाएंगे 80 लाख 8 मिलियन लीटर 8 मिलियन लीटर आप पर डे आपको पानी चाहिए तो आप कहां से पानी ला रहे हैं नदी होनी चाहिए आपके पास डिफरेंट सोर्सेज होने चाहिए आप एक्सट्रैक्ट तो कर रहे हैं ना कहीं ना कहीं एक्सट्रैक्ट कर रहे हैं और वो सप्लाई दे रहे हैं चाहे सप्लाई चैन में हो तो ये इतनी क्वांटिटी हमें चाहिए और इसका 80% बेस वाटर इसका 80% जो वेस्ट वाटर है तो मतलब एक मिलियन मिलियन की बात करें तो 80% ऑलमोस्ट मान के चलें आप मे बी 6.4 अगर 8 8 करोड़ है तो 80% 6.4 करोड़ लीटर इज द बेस वाटर तो वो वो तो ट्रीट हो नहीं रहा पहली बात वो 6.4 को आप ट्रीट करने के लिए बहुत बड़ा सिस्टम चाहिए आपको ट्रीटमेंट प्लान चाहिए वो क्या हो रहा है डायरेक्टली डिस्चार्ज हो रहा है वाटर बॉडीज में या सिस्टम में चला जा रहा है फिर हमारे पास नया हमारे पास कोई ऐसा सिस्टम नहीं है जिससे हम अडॉप्ट करें तो उसके लिए हमें कहीं ना कहीं एक चेक पॉइंट बनाना पड़ेगा या तो हमें वो एस टी पी सीवर स्टेटमेंट प्लान या कोई ऐसा सिस्टम डेवलप करें आर्टिफिशियल कोई ऐसा सिस्टम डेवलप करके उस पानी को हम रीयूटिलाइज कर लें कि डिफरेंट प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी और टर्सरी ट्रीटमेंट बाद हम पानी को रीयूटिलाइज कर लें एरीगेशन परपज में ले लें या टर्सरी टर्सरी ट्रीटमेंट के बाद हम उसको इस क्वालिटी का बना लें कि हम अपने घरों में और जगह यूज कर लें पीने को छोड़ करके तो कि कल काफी हद तक ये प्रॉब्लम रिजोल्व हो जाएगी अभी हम खाली इंटेक कर रहे हैं और विड्रॉल कर रहे हैं तो हमारे पास ये जो पूरा जो ये बैलेंस है पूरा डिस्टर्ब हो रहा है 
अभी आप इसीलिए मैं इसी मैथमेटिक्स की भाषा में इसलिए मैं आपको समझा रहा था कि मैंने छोटे डिस्ट्रिक्ट का लिया जहाँ पे इतनी क्वांटिटी आपको रिक्वायर्ड है और उसको तो कैसे आप फुलफिल कर रहे हैं आपने ये नहीं सोचा कि इसको हम कैसे जो आज इंटेक ले रहे हैं हम अपने सोचते हैं कैसे उसको हम रिकूप करेंगे आप इंतजार करेंगे बरसात का कि आएगी वाटर रिचार्ज होगा फिर होगा क्योंकि आप सभी घरों में आज के डेट में कोई आदमी हर आदमी ने समर्सिबल पम्प लगा लिए हैं हर दूसरे चौथे घरों में आपको ये मिलते हैं उनको फ्री है हैंड है बटन दबाया पानी मिला उसको ये नहीं मतलब है कि क्या होगा किसका हम ले रहे हैं तो फिर ये बहुत बड़ा एक इश्यू है अपने आप में तो इस पर थोड़ा सा फोकस करेंगे तो खुद ही समझ में आता है कि हम कहाँ पे हैं और ये थर्ड वर्ल्ड वॉर की बात कर रहे हैं और जो चीजें हैं वो चीजें एक इसी डायरेक्शन में ले जाती है इस के साथ पोल्यूशन को भी दोनों चीजें ऐड कर uh thank you so much sir. that was such a good explanation i would like to talk to revti k revti ki i think dr um, satyendranath has clearly answered your question that ro water is good for health or not in the beginning so we are not going to repeat that but dr nath spoke very well about it in the beginning before even he started with his uh, keynote address so if there are no more questions it's time to formally thank dr nath Thank you so much for such an elaborate and beautiful lecture. You spoke on how environmental factors affect the work quality of a person and its impact on the workplace, along with the work stress. A person has to deal with environmental factors. This is such a new topic, and I think I am hearing for the first time in the ISTTPs, and this shows the success of ISTTP too. I congratulate you for selecting such a wonderful topic. you just upon the air quality index and accumulation of harmful gases at workplace inducing passive smoking for everyone and that slide having a picture of a person who is wearing a mask at a workplace and he is working on a computer sitting in a cabin it, it really horrified me it or actually terrified me is that future we are walking towards or is that future we are building for our children so you also talk about the water quality heat exposure light pollution resulting in heat exhaustion available at the workplace you also mention about the mortality at the workplace that six death happened at the workplace due to bad air quality which is again raising so many questions for everyone on the behalf of everyone present here i would like to express our gratitude to you for the talk the size of participation during your talk is testimony mm -hmm. and how thrilled everyone mm -hmm. was to listen to your speech we sincerely appreciate you for taking out time from your busy schedule to provide us with such a valuable information all thanks to you for your support and i wish you a great luck with all your future projects and look forward to meeting you soon again thank you so thank much you, sir thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you. Followers think and talk about problems, and leaders think about solutions. That's what I always speak about. Uh, my head of the institutions, such leader have the capacity to transform vision into reality. I would like to inform everyone. I would like to inform everyone who is present here that we have our patron and principal, Professor Dr. Hukum Singh, here with us, and uh, he is here to share a few words with us. Sir, बहुत ही आदर और सम्मान के साथ मैं आपको स्टेज पर आमंत्रित करती हूँ इस शब्दों से. आप सभी को नमस्कार आज वैशाखी विक्रम संवत दो हजार उन्यासी श्रवण नक्षत्र सिद्ध योग में आयोजित आई एस टी टी पी सेकेंड के चतुर्थ दिवस के अवसर पर मैं आप सभी का महाविद्यालय परिवार की ओर से हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं आज के हमारे व्याख्यान वाला के प्रथम नायक की नोट स्पीकर 
डॉक्टर सुभाष चंद्रा जी एच ओ डी जूलर जी एम डी एस यूनिवर्सिटी अजमेर राजस्थान इंडिया और दूसरे हमारे व्याख्यान माला के नायक यूनिट स्पीकर डॉक्टर अजय कुमार गांधी जी गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज आर्ट्स एंड साइंस महाराष्ट्र इंडिया आज की व्याख्यान माला के तीसरे नायक नोट स्पीकर डॉक्टर सत्येंद्र नाथ एच पर्यावरण विज्ञान विभाग प्रयागराज उत्तर प्रदेश आप तीनों के व्याख्यान बहुत ही सार्वजनिक उपयोगी सिद्ध होंगे आपने अपना व्यस्तम समय में से समय निकाल कर न केवल हमें कृतार्थ किया है अपितु ये पर्यावरण प्रदूषण के प्रति जागरण का जो अभियान ये यज्ञ जो हमने चलाया है उसमें अपने व्याख्यान और विचारों की आहुति देकर आपने मानवता की सेवा की है ये तदर्थ आपके प्रति मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हुआ बधाई भी अर्पित करता हूँ और अब इनके बाद आज की व्याख्यान माला के अगले नायक हैं डॉक्टर राजेंद्र के पुरोहित एच ओ डी जूलोजी गवर्नमेंट डोंगर कॉलेज बीकानेर राजस्थान इंडिया इनके पश्चात इस व्याख्यान वाला को संबोधित संबोधित और सुशोभित करेंगे डॉक्टर याया बक्का यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कश्मीर जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इंडिया और इनके पश्चात डॉक्टर शंकर सुब्रमण्यन अय्यर सीनियर फैकल्टी एंड बिजनेस डेवलपमेंट मैनेजर यू ए यूनाइटेड अरब अमीरात आप तीनों विद्वान वक्ताओं के प्रति मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ महाविद्यालय परिवार की ओर से कि आप अपने संबोधन में संबोधन से इस मंच से दुनिया को पर्यावरण के प्रति सावचेत करने के लिए अपना मार्गदर्शन देंगे तदर्थ आप सभी के प्रति और जितने भी डेलीगेट्स और विद्वान लोग इस कॉन्फ्रेंस से जुड़े हुए हैं उन सब के प्रति भी मैं आदर और सम्मान के साथ आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ इस निवेदन के साथ कि ये 26 तारीख तक ये महायज्ञ होगा 26 को इसके समापन समारोह में आप सभी तैतीस देशों के प्रतिनिधि इससे जुड़ेंगे मैं ऐसी उम्मीद करता हूँ उन्हें आप सभी के प्रति आभार जय हिंद जय भारत Thank you so much, sir, for your support. We really value the insight and guidance you provide to all of us, and your words of encouragement keeps us motivated throughout. And your presence is very, very important to us. Other than that, sir, I would like to tell you that our college, you, as a strong, positive, and dynamic principal, is very important to us. Your knowledge, your experience, our guidance, your guidance, our guidance, our guidance, our guidance, our guidance, our guidance, our guidance, बेहतर बनने के लिए प्रेरित करता है आपके बिना ये प्रशिक्षण कभी नहीं हो पाता हम आपका आशीर्वाद मांगते हैं और हम आशा करते हैं कि आप हमेशा हमारे साथ रहेंगे नाउ इट्स टाइम फॉर द सेवेंटीन की नोट एड्रेस विच इज टू बी डिलीवर्ड बाय डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रोहित डॉक्टर प्रोहित इज हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट जोलॉजी गवर्नमेंट डूंगर कॉलेज बीकानेर राजस्थान इंडिया 
Dr. Rajinder Poit has been serving Gandhian Dugar College from last 31 years in the field of teaching, research and administration. He is having expertise in the field of radiation science and published around 150 research papers in the Journal of National and International Review. That is a big number, Dr. Pohit. Heartiest congratulations to you. Dr. Pohit has attended around 150 international and national conferences and delivered invited lectures and shared the sessions. He has also delivered keynote lectures in Japan and United States. He has visited in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and various other countries. Dr. Poet has supervised 26 PhD scholars and 30 Hamsel under his supervision. He has organized one national, two international conferences in the field of radiation biology. He is recipient of many national and international awards. District Administration Award, Bharat Jyoti Award, Best, Best Citizen of India Award, Rajiv Gandhi Excellence Award, ISHWER Award, and Who's Who Award from USA. He's a life member of many national and international societies. Presently, Dr. Poet is holding the post of National Secretary of Indian Society of Radiation Biology. He also looks after the media and the legal self of Dungar College, Bikane. Dr. Prohit, aap swagat, abhinandan. Hum bhaat khush hain ki aap hamare saath hain. I would Thank request you. Dr. Prohit to start with this video chat. Thank you, Mamta ma'am, for nice introduction. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir, you're audible and you're visible too. Yeah, so you quickly uh, uh, start uh, sharing my slides. We can't share the slides. Yes, sir, we are doing it from here. Yeah, I'm waiting. As mentioned uh, in my first slide, as Dr. Mamta Sharma, uh, she has introduced me for last three decades around, we have been working in the field of uh, herbal radio protection and radiation science. Today, I would speak on protective potential of natural herbs against radiation and uh, heavy metals induced alterations in mice. As I spoke in, uh, in my many conferences, Bikanir is one of the biggest, biggest center in the field of cancer research. Achara Tulsi Cancer Hospital and research center, Bikanir, is one of the best research center in the field of cancer research. Uh, next slide, please, here. Next slide, please. Next. Next, next, next. Next. Now, when and then we talk about the radiation, here I would like to mention when I talk about the radiation types, radiations, as we all know, are of two types that is particulate and the electromagnetic. Particulate, alpha, beta, positron, neutron, etc., they all are the particulate kind of uh, radiation. Then the electromagnetic, the gamma rays, X rays, UV. Radio waves, light waves, these all are the uh, electromagnetic. Again, the radiation particulate, they are of two types again the charge and the uncharged. Charge, alpha and beta. Uncharged is the uh, neutrons. We can also divide radiation into two types that is the uh, radiation with the ionizing and the non ionizing. And radiations, again, alpha, beta, gamma, etc. And the non ionizing radio waves and light rays, etc. When a radiation passes through a matter, when the matter gets ionized, such kind of radiations are called ionizing radiations. Uh, next slide, please. Here. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah, next. Back, back. Okay, why, uh, how we get uh, exposed by the radiations? You see, due to residual activity, due to clinical practices, due to agricultural activities, due to industrial effluents, and the nuclear, nuclear test explosions. These are certain ways we get exposed by the radiations 
maybe of fine hygiene, maybe of non hygiene, maybe of electromagnetic, maybe of some other kind of radiation. In one way or other, many times we get exposed with the radiations. Next, please. Next. Yeah, again, next. Yeah, as I had mentioned, the we have included along with the radiation, we are working on the uh, heavy metal toxicity also. You can see this slide. Heavy metal. Suppose we talk about the lead, lead, mercury, cadmium. These are certain heavy metals which have been used in our laboratory. Lead is a it create it uh, uh, promotes abdominal cramps. Uh, learning disabilities uh, is a significant uh, health problem nowadays. It causes anemia, tiredness, nerve damage, and attention deficit disorders and constipation. These are certain problems which are caused by the lead toxicity. So, along with the reasons, we are also using as toxicant lead acetate. Next, please. Again, next. Now, the, when a radiation passes to the cell, what they perform, what they do in the cell, suppose a cell gets exposed with radiation, it causes ionization and the excitation. Ionization and excitation, it, it may lead to free radical formation. These free radicals, they are very much harmful for the body. And after the free radical formation, the radical fixation causes, then it leads to biochemical lesions causes. When the biochemistry is changed, I would I will explain in the, my next few slides. Then the total proteins, glycogen, cholesterol, then various biochemical parameters change. They may lead to cellular damage. It means it may lead to uh, histopathological alteration in the body. Next, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. Earlier, we had used various kinds of synthetic radio protectors. I have mentioned such a name here. You can see sulfided compounds, aminothyl compounds, phosphorylated aminothyl compounds, and the calcium channel blockers. These, these radio protectors, they were used uh, early 70s, 80s, but they all were highly toxic at their effective dose levels. So we are working, we are trying to find out certain uh, herbal protectors which are non-toxic and which can be given to the cancer patient during and after radiotherapy. Next slide, please. Next, please. Yeah. As the, these are the chemical protectors like cysteine, cystamine, 23 DMP, EDTA, WR2721, and the DMSA and 2MPG. Is it 2 MPG is 2 marker to propylene glycine. These all radio protectors, they were chemical radio protectors. They all were chemical, they all were toxic at uh, when they used against radio toxicity and chemotoxicity. So now we have come to herbal pro products. Next slide, please. Now, so what should be there in an ideal radio protector? It should be uh, orally administered, very important point. Then the, uh, as I mentioned, it should be non-toxic. It should be uh, chemically stable, available at uh, low cost and uh, rapidly absorbed and distributed in the body. And it can be clinically, clinically used in the radiotherapy. If these things are avail not available in any herbal, it is not worth to using herbals. So, any idea that protector, it should have the such kind of properties. Next slide, please. Now, what are the steps involved in the development and evaluation of a radio protective property of medicine plants? How can we use? How can we evolve? Suppose we take a plant, suppose we use uh, we select a plant. After extraction, after after standardization. Various kinds of tests in vitro, in in vivo tests are performed. For the in vitro test, like the anti-oxidant assay, 
follow the test essay then the comment essay are also performed plasmid relaxation essay is also being performed alum uh, alum sepa essay these all are four kind of essay they are for the in vitro test for the in vivo test endogenous spin colony forming also called cfu essay whole body survival and the body weight and the gastro gastrointestinal damage essay such kind of essay are used next please next slide please now we are the certain uh, herbal plants which i have mentioned in my slides amlica officinalis we already heard on the slide the jambla and the aloe vera also then the moringa also nigium and the all these these plants we have used against the reproductive as a reproductor next slide please now this is the uh, amlica and uh, as i have mentioned the common name is amala this is number we have also identified in our old department of botany uh, we have the ss number also this uh, is the dual gold herbarium it belongs to family formaceae it occurs all over the india sri lanka malaya china and the pakistan next slide please suppose when we talk about the plant material and its properties from the plant the aloe vera you all all can see name aloe vera family liliaceae uh, the common names are the uh, we call in particular rajasthan in the gwar pata the gad kumari in the geek word the part used in the leaves uh, i i spoke in uh, my many talks nowadays the european countries they are trying to get the uh, patent of the gwar pata and the tulsi podina which are our own uh, they all are described in our ayurveda also so one day we have worked my my three four phd student they worked on aloe vera next please yeah the the are the properties of aloe vera it is protective wound healing properties anti inflammatory anti fungal and is also being used as anti anti cancer product next please now the trigonella phenum gracium commonly called as methi it belongs to family leguminosae the part we use is seed part of the medicine uses anti diabetic anti inflammatory anti tumor diuretic hypoglycemic and restorative next please next is the uh, guduchi uh, we all might have heard nowadays you can see the, the neem giloy dinospora cordifolia it belongs to family many uh, spermacy but its properties anti allergy anti aging anti stress anti oxidant therapeutic properties it causes uh, it is used in the jaundice skin diseases then the gout rheumatoid then the infection general weakness arthritis diabetic and anemia in all kind of diseases uh, the neem giloy is commonly used but we have also used this drug against the as the herbal radio protector next please now the uh, next please yeah the, in this slide what we have mentioned we cannot use any herbal product against the cancer patient uh, against the as the radio protector we have to calculate the drf there are certain formula drf is the dose reduction dose reduction factor drf vitamin c we have used the reduction the dose is 1.60 vitamin e the alpha tocopherol drf is 1.86 vitamin c plus c 1.90 Then the mentha papyrata, the peppermint, one point seven eight, amblica. Recently, we have submitted two pages on amblica, one point nine six, guar pata also aloe vera, one point six five, rose mary, rose mary is officinalis, one point eight nine, trigonella finum, one point six five, alsunia scolaris. There is sub prana. You all might have heard about the sub prana, one point eight zero, tinus para one point six eight, and the penna ginseng is the one point seven five. So first. you have to find out your selective drf then you can use the uh, any kind of herbal next please what is the example i have mentioned how did we use the amblica in the mice you see fresh fruits of amblica in our laboratory when they were cleaned cut into small pieces they were air dried powdered and dusted with double distilled water 
by reflection for that is our that is 12-12-12. The extent that's obtained was vacuum evaporated so as to make it in powder form. The extent was dissolved in the distilled water just before oral admission. The drug was given for seven days prior to lead acetate treatment or irradiation or the common treatment. Next please. Next slide please. Now, as I mentioned my first slide, Acharya Dulsi Cancer Hospital and Research Center. In a, uh, no, no, we are in a common college. We don't have the medicine facility, but we have the Acharya Dulsi Cancer Hospital. So the cobalt 60 gamma radio, gamma radio therapy source electron obtained for Canada was used to aid the animals. The facility was provided by the radio therapy department or Prince Vijayasinghe Government Hospital, Bikaner, the uh, in uh, my previous uh, talk also, as I had mentioned, a train comes from the Punjab and the district from Gangana, Haryana. Many cancer patients, uh, around 300 to 500 patients per day, they get to the radio station, they come to the Achar Tulsi Cancer Hospital, they get radiation, and evening they go back to the Punjab. So, we, what kind of dose we used, it was 0.95 gray to 1.85 gray per minute different doses are being uh, prescribed for the different kinds of tissues also. Next please. Heavy metals, all kinds of heavy metals like the cadmium, lead, mercury, we have used procured from the defined chemicals. The dose cadmium and lead state, cadmium was used at the dose of 20 ppm, lead state, the mercury chloride, it was used at the dose of 0.5 ppm, all were in the aqueous state and the same was administered to the mice with the drinking water. Next please. Now here I have mentioned I think slightly uh, slightly disturbed but there is no problem. How did we plan the experiments? How we are planning what we are doing in Bikanir? We divide the animals in many groups. Some of the groups are controlled, some of the groups are experimental groups. Control in the control groups, only radiation, only heavy metal, different doses here I mentioned 3 gray, 6 gray, in some of the experiments we are using 2 gray, 4 gray. It means from the 0.5 gray to 10 gray we can use all kinds of doses. These are sub doses. The doses uh, may be with the heavy metal and the in the experimental groups we administered Moringa olifera or the aloe vera or the amplica as a other product. Next please. Next slide. Now, as you all know, Department of Zoology, Government Dungu Bikane, we are registered with the CPCSA New Delhi. You see, now that the animal killing is completely banned, you cannot perform experiments on the mice. We, we have our own IAEC, that is the Institutional Animal Ethics Committee, then the, all the experiments they are performed by using the proper guideline of the Government of India, CPCSA New Delhi. We procure the animals. From the Lala Lajpat University ESR, we maintain here at 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. The animals, the water, tap water, we provided with at the meter. Next, please. So, these are the uh, certain graphic presentation of our the data, like the total proteins, we are performing glycogen, cholesterol, SA phosphatase, DNA, RNA. All kinds of parameters we observe in the form of increase or decrease we have but we have observed that after seven after 14 days one day two day four day seven day one week two week and the four week these are the other out of the days what we found in the control animals the increase or decrease were observed up to the day 14 that is two weeks and in the estimate animals the increase or decrease was found at the seven or ten days next slide please next please here, these are the certain slides. In the left corner, you can see the, these are the slides of liver, normal liver, and you can see the hemorrhage, cytopathic degeneration, vacuolation, cardiolysis, and certain places you can see the binucleated cells and the completely enucleated cells, cardiolysis, and the hemorrhage. They all we have found in the case of liver. We have heard a whole mice is used. We so because if one mouse is 
sacrificing his life for our research we are used we use we are using all kinds of tissues this is from the tissue of the liver next please next please you can see this is the istopathy of the kidney we have all slides all slides have been prepared in our own laboratory you see liver the glomeruli different blood vessels the different different the nephrons you can see the main blood vessels you can see what we found when we give only radiation the various kinds of histopathy changes are noticed when we give along with the heavy metals the changes were more severe when the herbal test was given the changes were less severe we showed that the herbal products they, they minimize the side effect caused by the radiation next slide please again you can see the slides of testes mouse slides you can see in certain uh, number two slides you can see the uh, huge response and the damage seven vertebrates is at the cause of uh, radiation loss of response these are slides of histopathology of testes next please now the jejunum you can see in the slide number 10 you see the you can see the goblet cells again the various kinds of in the uh, villus various layers of the uh, jejunum intestine again same kind of changes are observed next please now what is the protective mechanism of amblica it increases the gss level because amla it is the research source of vitamin c it reduces the formation of radicals inhibits the lipid peroxidation antioxidant activity reduces the oxidative changes it is a potent stimulator of a uh, hematopoietic system uh, it contains the polyphenol ingredients which are scavengers of oxidant radicals what is done when we give radiation it causes formation of certain free radicals the free radicals are removed by the glutathione which is induced by the amblica next please this is the uh, uh, we have prepared for the protective mechanism rendered by natural plants what by, suppose we have mentioned here the and a schematic diagram is there different kind of cells how how it is affect the different cell organelles i have mentioned in this slide next please now it is what is happening suppose we are using the crude extract of herbal plants whether aloe vera whether amblica what are our future prospects and challenges the mechanism of protection by the large number of nutrients and uh, phytochemicals that can module radiation response favorably are not yet clear because we are just too rich only and this such has to be worked out by using active ingredients of each plant extract we are trying to do so whether it is induced apoptosis can be promoted by some antioxidants in tumors but not in normal tissues and when it is useful to protect against it is induced apoptosis in normal cells is also yet to be done protection against apoptosis in damaged cells is also relevant to chemo prevention strategies in population exposed to environmental radiation as well as in radiotherapy planning further in vivo studies are required that focus on the use of the protectors following radiation for their possible use after unplanned or accidental exposures these are the future prospect and challenges next please now i i conclude my talk all kind of tissues whether testes whether kidney they suffered with radiation and heavy metals both kind of the agents when biochemical action changes the histological also changes when we give the common treatment it showed synergistic changes next please next please next herbal treated animals show less severe radiation and an early and fast recovery in comparison to non treated animals it seems the herbal test protect the tissues at both the dose levels mm-hmm. without any better treatment that might protect the animals from radiation by more than one mechanism due to multiplicity of its properties next please next i acknowledge aruna dr rutarshna my school indubala pooja safali and dr manish agarwal uh, they all were in the working in the, my laboratory next please next slide there are the conferences we organized in this field 
in the national conference we organized on strains in medicine biology and cancer research during October 17, 1922-04. In the conference on emerging frontiers and challenges in medicine biology, January 24-25-2012, at recently we organized Interest the conference in medicine biology, I-7-2020, on January 19-21-2022. Next, please. This is the uh, short the Achar Tulsi Cancer Hospital. We all go there along with the mice, our scholar, faculty members. We give the radiation and we come back to the laboratory. One of the uh, shorts of uh, uh, gamma radiation. Next, please. Again, recently we have organized the IC220 for Honorable Vice Chancellor. Next, please. Yes, there are some of the glimpses of I7220. A large number of interested delegates from all of the India and various, various other countries they visited Bikanir and attended the conference. Next, please. Next, please. Again, this is our laboratory. Next, please. So, thank you, Dr. Mamta, for giving this, this, this opportunity. And thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Puhit. That was such a wonderful lecture. Even I was so much engrossed and I was seeing such a wonderful team you have to work with you. I must compliment you for that. Thank you so much, Mamta Ji. Uh, if any questions, please raise your hand so we can ask that from Dr. Puhit. Dr. Puhit, so many compliments for you. I think open the chat box this time. Just I want to see the compliments. So many um, compliments for you, excellent, highly informative, very nice. So I must congratulate you for such a wonderful talk. If no questions, it's time to formally thank Dr. Poet. Thank you, Dr. Poet, for such a wonderful address. Let me tell you, your work is amazing on radiation toxicology, the use of herbs to minimize the effect of radiations. You have a wonderful team to support you. Please accept the heartiest congratulations to you. Slides prepared in your laboratory are very beautiful, and I really appreciate that you try to use every part of the animal cell which is sacrificed for the research. Yeah. I take this opportunity to just thank you on the behalf of the entire team. Your talk has worked as a starting point to resolve many important issues in the area of uh, research. Thank you so much, sir. And we would like to have you again with us as soon as possible. After thank, you. Than you are. thank you, Mantaji. Thank you very much. So now it's time for the 18th keynote address, which is to be delivered by Dr. Yaya Bhattiyar. He is assistant professor in the Department of Zoology and working in the Fish Biology and Limnology Research Laboratory in the University of Kashmir, Srinagar, India. Dr. Bhattiyar, aapka bahut bahut swagat, aapka bhinandan. Dr. Bhattiyar completed his MSc in Zoology in 2002 from Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, and was awarded PhD in Zoology with ethiology and fish and fishery specialization from the University of Jammu in 2008. He has worked as a junior research fellow and senior research fellow in DST project entitled Nutrition Requirement of Certain Freshwater Plants of Local Commercial Importance and Development of Low Cost Formula Feeds for three years and also worked as a senior research fellow in another DST project entitled Demonstration of Mono and Polyculture of Macro Brachium Rosenbergi and Indian Major Carps in Jammu. For one year, Dr. Bhaktiyar has a teaching experience of 13 years and research experience of more than 12 years in the field of fisheries, fish and fisheries. Dr. Bhaktiyar was on the, champ, uh, on the top rank holder in the state in 10 plus zoology lecturer list conducted by Jammu and Kashmir Public Service Commission in the year 2008. He has published over 42 research papers in reputed national and international journals in the field of fish and fisheries. Moreover, he has participated in 45 international, national, regional conferences besides attending number of workshops as well. He is a life member of various societies including Indian Science Congress Association, Inland Fisheries Society of India, Indian Fisheries Association, Indian Academy of Environmental Biology, etc. 
He has recently been conferred upon a fellowship by Academy of Environmental Biology, Lucknow, and Congress of Zoology Matters by Zoological Society of India, Bodh Gaya. He is also in the editorial board and the peer reviewer of various national and international reputable journals. Presently, he is also investigating a BST SERB funded project, and his focus of research is fish biology and limnology, especially the impact of exotic carps on local fish fauna and water ecosystems. So, Dr. Bhaktiar, I would request you to start with your keynote address. The stage is all yours. Just give me one minute, one or two minutes, please. Yeah, sure, sir. Please take your time.
Uh, we would like all our participants to kindly wait for two minutes as Dr. Bhaktiya will soon join us. There's no problem with the audio. Dr. Bhaktiya will soon join us. Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, are my sli uh, slides visible? Uh, no, sir. They're not. Okay. Yes, sir. They're visible now. A full screen. Yes, a full screen. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, to all my senior colleagues and all delegates who are part of this prestigious workshop, especially Professor Hukum Singh Sahib, Dr. Mamta Sharma, all members of the organizing committee who are who are performing and professionally doing on their their job to make this event a great success. A very good afternoon to afternoon to all of you. This time, the theme chosen is impact and panacea of environmental pollution: the past, present, and future. The, which is one of the important and the burning topics um, of uh, today's era in terms of management of this kind of pollution. So today, I shall be talking on this very uh, aspect that is plastic pollution and its impact on the aquatic fauna. As uh, I belong to the section of the fisheries uh, in zoology, so I shall be talking, restricting myself to the aquatic fauna. Hope my, my screen is visible, ma'am? Yes, sir, it is visible. Yes, sir. 
is it presenter view or full screen it is full screen okay now first of all we shall be knowing that what pollution is pollution can simply be defined as the introduction of contaminants into the natural environment that cause adverse changes so these changes are all because of the unwanted substances which we put in the environment and that too at a faster rate then they are dispersed are diluted are decomposed so that is why we call such components such things as the pollutants so my topic is the plastic pollution and its impact on the aquatic fauna or pollution can also be defined as the undesirable change in the physical chemical or biological parameters of the environment that can adversely affect the ecosystem and the survival of the living organisms pollution is known to be there since the human kind ever existed so firstly it is the group of the people who congregated and remained at a particular place for a longer period of time and they led to the deterioration of the environment in terms of dump, dumping the things which are undesirable and later on with the advancement and with industrialization and technology this became a universal problem when we talk about the plastic now what plastic is we simply say the plastics are the synthetic polymers which are supple or malleable and can be transformed in different shapes and the plastics they are composed of long chains of polymers which are composed of carbon oxygen hydrogen silicon and chloride and they are also acquired from the natural gas oil and coal and the most prominent ones when we talk are what we see during day to day life they are polyethylene we call it as a pe polyethylene polypropylene that is pp polystyrene we call it ps and polyethylene terry terephthalate that is pet that is pet bottle what we use in our daily life as the cold drink bottles then it is the polyvinyl chloride which is a low density polyethylene and many other high density polyethylene they comprise almost 90% of the worldwide plastic pollution then what are the properties of the of the plastic which makes it a universal usage item the properties of the plastics is one of the important properties is its flexibility durability low cost and easy to handle that is lightweight and it is highly resistant to corrosion and that is why it, it is widely accepted worldwide and that is why it is a nuisance now plastic can withstand high rate of electrical and thermal insulation and thus have tremendous industrial and commercial usage there has been an exponential increase in the plastic production from 1950 onwards and when the plastic started it started with almost 1.5 million tons in the initial 1950s and now we do have the garbage of about 322 million tons of the plastic on this very earth <clears throat> plastic pollution is the accumulation of the unwanted plastic materials in the environment as a consequence of the greedy approach towards the use of plastic by the human population in different ways the abundant limitless and improper use of plastics by human beings it leads to its unsatisfied increase 
in the environment resulting in the most hazardous pollution what we call it as the plastic pollution and the same has been put forth by the roads in his paper in 19, 2018 so when we talk about the plastic as a global problem this very pollution of the environment with the plastic is now a global problem with the plastic debris contaminating contaminating the habitats from the poles to the equator or we can say from the equator up to the poles and from the shoreline and the sea to the deepest part of the oceans plastic pollution results from highly heterogeneous mixture of litter types differing in origin size shape and polymer type the majority of this litter originates from the land with rivers taking them to the seas and thus the huge water bodies which comprise almost more than 75% of the globe they are polluted by the pollution which spreads from only 25% part of the globe then when we talk about this very pollution the pollution of the environment with the plastic it is a, it is it is it is it seems to be never ending it seems to be increasing day by day without proper management practices when we talk that what are the sources of the plastic pollution in the aquatic ecosystems we say there are different sources they lead to the plastic pollution in the aquatic ecosystems the first one is the poor waste management and unlawful dumping that is there is no management practice that we are to dump this plastic waste industries are also one of the important causes of the plastic pollution inadequate wastewater filtration coastal littering now when we when we talk about these one by one we mean to say that if we talk about the poor waste management and unlawful dumping it is due to the absence of the effective landfill fragments and that is why they are being taken to the places where they are dumped on the grounds without effective measures if we talk about the industries sorry if we talk about the industries as the source of the source of the plastic pollution most of the industries lack proper waste disposal mechanisms so these prefer to release the waste generated in the streams rivers and oceans which is which is easy in access every industry does not want to want to just spend its money on the management aspects but the seas oceans and the water bodies are the easy means inadequate what wastewater filtration is also another cause and most of the wastewater treatment treatment plants they lack the facility of filtering the small pollutants like microplastics such as cosmetic microbeads or the fibers from the clothing uh, which make the water um, polluted then we do have the coastal littering as one of the important sources tourism industry is one of the important causes of the the uh, coastal littering tourism industry which brings thousands and the lakhs and the millions of the tourists along the coastlines for the purpose of spending their holidays on the tourist destinations they form the these very beaches they form the main tourist destination they and also cause generation of the plastic waste in the form of the plastic wrappings food and beverage packaging and plastic beach toys then discharge of the flood or the storm water that is also one of the important sources of the plastic pollution during the storms runoff water can pick up the municipal waste from dump sites street and the litter sites and then it can spread to the uh, to the different water bodies then combined sewage overflows in terms when we when we talk about these very sewage overflows when the sewage gets blocked or it is overflowed this 
it may it may lead lead to the release of the untreated these very plastic plastics into the oceans and the water bodies then natural disasters they can also be one of the important sources of the plastic pollution then one of the important uh, aspects of the plastic pollution is ghost fishing so when i firstly heard this very term i i i was a little bit confused at what this ghost fishing means ghost fishing it means the fishing which 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 leads to the mortality of the fishes inadvertently now what does it mean it means it means that when the when the ships or when the great um, large trawlers they dump their non functional fishing equipment such as nets lines ropes into the sea which leads to the entanglement of the aquatic fauna that we call it as the ghost fishing because nobody is fishing the fishes but they themselves are getting entangled into these very um, you can say nets which which are dumped in the sea and they lose their lives then shipping shipping is one of the important sources cargo ships may discharge litter into the ocean by accident many times you you must have seen the um, you can say we we are um, almost aware of the oil spills and other things but many times the ships carrying the plastic uh, you can say uh, things when they met, meet with the accident these very plastic pollutes the water bodies then off offshore oil and gas platforms under sea exploration they are also cause of the plastic pollution thus plastic pollution of the aquatic ecosystem it is it is becoming an increasingly urgent problem with the weight of plastic pollution in the oceans which it is being predicted that by 2050 if the same rate of the usage of the plastic and the dumping of the plastic is being carried on we will see more of the plastic in the oceans than that of the fishes so this is very alarming i hope i am audible hello hello sir your screen is visible your audio is coming yes sir okay okay now what are the pathways by which plastic enters the world world's oceans this is the this is the picture this is the gra graphical representation of the pathway by which the plastic enters the uh, world's oceans it is the global primary plastic production which is about 200 million tons per year and the global plastic waste it is 275 million tons per year and the coastal plastic waste it is 99.5 million tons per year and it is all because of the mismanagement of the coastal plastic waste which is almost 31.9 million tons per year and almost plastic inputs to the oceans it is about 8 million tons per year and the plastic in surface water it is about 10000s to 100000 tons that is about 1 lakh tons of the plastic is being dumped on the surface of the oceans worldwide then marine and the ocean pollution we we are seeing that different kinds of the plastics they are polluting the oceans our oceans and two third of all the fish species they have ingested the plastic that is almost almost um, the more number of the fishes they have almost ingested the plastic in the form of the microplastics or the uh, macroplastics whether they are microplastic or the um, macroplastic and about 335 million metric tons of the plastic is created per year and 50% of this plastic is a single use plastic and about 80% of the marine debris and the pollution is plastic so we should be very much careful uh, by the use of the plastic and the way we manage the plastic 
So disposal of all the plastic waste ever generated, it is only 9% which is recycled, 12% is incinerated and 79% is used as the landfill. Then uh, we do have we do have the different uh, this uh, picture which depicts that how this very process takes place that what are the effects of the different um, plastics on the on the living organisms that we shall be dealing later on as well in a in an elaborative way. Then these very plastic particles they are classified on the basis of the size and shape. They, they are classified on the basis of the density. They are uh, classified on the basis of the chemical composition. As I told you earlier, they can be classified as the mega plastics. They can be classified as the macro plastics. They can be classified as mesoplastics. They can be classified as microplastics. And even they can be classified as the nanoplastics, which we are unable to see with the naked eye. That is the microplastic and the nanoplastic, but they are in air, they are on land, they are in water. Water, and they are being taken inadvertently or you can say we have no we have no choice but to breathe the air which is containing these very microplastics or we have to we have to drink the water which have these very nano and the microplastics now i shall be a little bit talking about the microplastics as well that from where this very microplastic comes from what is microplastic? When we say that the microplastic, we mean to say that the those very fragments of the plastic which are less than 5 mm, that is uh, in length, according to the US National Oceanographic Atmospheric Administration, that is NOAA, and the European Chemical Agency categorizes this very specific size as the microplastic. This fragmented plastic is persistent in the ecosystem and are classified as the primary and the secondary microplastics. Then one of the more important terms that is the that is the microplastic. I told you that less than 5 mm size, we categorize them as the micro, microplastics and they are also categorized as the primary microplastics and the secondary microplastics. So, um, and secondly, when, when, we, when we are looking at these very in the picture that you are seeing that how small they are like, they are small sand like granules and the fish on the right hand side, you can see that the fish along with the water is ingesting these very micro uh, microbeads, micro plastic particles or nanoparticles and thus its stomach is getting, you can say, um, swollen and it is unable to eat further, losing its appetite and then lastly it is the death. Then I told you, I told you, I just was talking about the classification of the microplastic that they are classified as the primary and the secondary microplastics. The sources, the sources can be the domestic, uh, domestic, um, you can say waste. It can be the cosmetics. Now, um, one, one uh, thinks that how come the cosmetics are the source of the microplastics? The whatever scrubbers we use on the face to scrub our skin for the dead cells they have the they have the small particles in it which we feel that they are scrubbing our skin they are actually the microplastics used in the used in the cosmetics then nowadays even the toothpaste paste do use the microplastics to clean the teeth and then industrial construction, they are also the sources of the uh, microplastic then the coastal fishing activities are also the sources. Now, I shall be uh, moving on to my um, second phase, that is the impact on the aquatic fauna. And firstly, we shall be talking about the invertebrate fauna. That is how the plastic impacts the invertebrate fauna. The effects of the plastic ingestion in the form of the microplastics, they have been reported in wide range of the invertebrate organisms, including crustaceans. We do have the insects. We do have the lobsters, mollusks and many filter feeders such as mussels, oysters, barnacles, and it has been investigated and it has come to limelight that they uptake microplastic and, and their stomach um, was 
dissected and the autopsy it was found that their stomach contained the greater amount of the microplastics being persistent for a longer period of time without the decomposition they lead to the accumulation of the organic pollutants released from it such as we do have the polychlorinated biphenyl uh, the which are which are um, released in the environment as well these pl plastic pollutants they get accumulated in the body tissues of the invertebrate leading to the chronic health risks as well then impact on the fish fauna the fishes uh, being the uh, being the diverse creatures among the vertebrates that is they are diverse in nature our oceans and the water bodies they are full of the fishes lovely fishes strange fishes bizarre fishes but but full of fishes the problems which arise from the indiscriminate disposal of the plastics into the global water bodies they are chronic rather than acute and they are long recognized it is not that we are not recognizing the problem but we are unable to address the problem and the most important problems arising from this nuisance they include the entanglement which i was talking earlier as well entanglement and the ingestion of these particles which are hazardous for the fish population the ingestion of the plastics has been reported in various groups including the fish leading to the internal blockage and injury to the digestive tract the plastic ingestion has also been reported approximately in 150 fish species which have been studied including the silago sihama pampas harpodon then the common fish which is cypna scarpio caracius oritus nugil cephalus we do have the hypothalamic thalamic different fishes even the surface feeders bottom feeders the column feeders the all are affected um, because of this very plastic pollution aquatic reptiles impact of these very plastic on the aquatic reptiles the recent concern about the ap apparent decline in the amphib and uh, the aquatic reptiles we see nowadays that the besides reptiles the amphibians they are also well affected by the uh, by the plastic pollution and the uh, recent studies have suggested that there is an urgent need for the information about how amphibians are um, affected by these very pollutants and among the amphibians the most affected species are uh, they are the they, they are the different kinds of the frogs and among the reptiles we do have the turtles and other aquatic organisms and mostly the, it is the tortoise and the turtles which are mostly affected because of the plastic and there there are these very uh, organisms these are also facing difficulties which are because of the ingestion and entanglement of the plastics they are exposed to number of the anthropogenic stressors among which plastic pollution is holding the top position and as we know that the sea turtles they are diverse they are there are n number of species of the turtles and the tortoises which are present in the water they have the definite migratory behavior and they have the complex life history now this plastic which is which is uh, which is spread all over the oceans and the water bodies they hinder their migratory route and this their complex life history stages they are in they are affected the um, the entanglement of the plastic fragments they have been accepted as a serious threat as well to the um, the different species such as chilonia we do have the dermochilus we do have the we do have the lepidochilus species which are mostly affected by this very plastic pollution and most probably iucn that is um, um, iucn red list they have documented the interactions with the marine litter and their effect on the on the uh, these very uh, aquatic reptiles now impact on the of the plastic pollution on the aquatic birds 
no this is this is a very uh, heart wrenching picture wherein we we are seeing on our left side of the screen that a bird which has ingested different kinds of plastics has died and when the things came out we we see that the different plastics they are coming out of the body and to to be an evidence that what the what the bird has eaten during the course of the time we see that the uh, that these very birds they are much affected by this very plastic pollution which has which has non lethal effect as well as the lethal effect um, effect both the fundamental properties and the extensive presence of the plastic particles in the marine environment have intense effects on the birds inhabiting the world's oceans and water bodies and the most prevalent form of the plastic in the marine environment it occurs as the polystyrene polypropylene polyethylene styrofoam polyvinyl chloride they are all present in the water bodies and these are having profound prominent effect on the aquatic birds by disturbing their physiological and the trophic balance as sea birds are highly diverse in behavior and adapt variedly to the marine environment they come in contact with this very deadly material in many ways mainly the two orders of the sea birds have been extensively studied to study the effect of the plastic pollution on these very birds these birds include the um patrols and the shear waters um and from the caradri formis the red phala ropes and the gulls turns and the waders they are mostly affected by this very plastic pollution now we see on this very screen that how come plastic is affecting the day to day life of these very birds which think every every plastic waste as a potential prey or a potential food item and one of the serious issues created by the plastic ingestion is the injury to the internal parts and consuming these very plastic it results in the complete blockage of the blockage of the internal organs and it has been seen in some young birds such as albatross that large quantities of indigestible material or the matter it has contributed to the intestinal obstruction and also bulky particles in the proventriculus had led to the ulceration of the mucosa there are some birds <coughs> sorry also the birds which do not vomit out unnecessary or indigested food particles they tend to accumulate them in their gizzards because there are some birds which have the property of vomiting if they accidentally or inadvertently they ingest those very food particles which they don't like but there are some birds which do, do not have the property of vomiting in those very birds these very particles of these very plastics they tend to accumulate in their gizzards which leads to their in gastrointestinal blockage and which affects their feeding stimulus and act, um, and each and every activity is hindered and as a result the hunger and satiety uh, satiety which is regulated by the hypothalamus on the basis of the signals which are transduced from the empty stomach is unable to reach uh, to the uh, brain and it is it is felt as if they are they are well fed as if their stomach is full so this leads to their their, their death and that is a merciless um, merciful death now in addition the presence of the large quantity of the plastic particles in the stomach may alter the secretion of the gastric gastric enzymes and the movement of the food in the small intestine as well it not only hinders the hormonal uh, you can say um, equilibrium but also it affects the enzyme secretion as well now lastly we shall be discussing the aquatic mammals 
that is aquatic mammals are also the worst sufferers of the plastic generated by the highest order of the mammal or you can see highest in terms of the intellectual that is man it is the it is because of the highest intellectual mammal all other mammals are suffering and in the oceans the threat to the marine life it comes from the various forms such as over exploitation and harvesting dumping of the waste pollution it is the alien species land reclamation dredging global climate change all these are affecting the marine life but among the marine mammals cetaceans are the are the most affected ones by the plastic pollution including whales manatees dolphins dugongs sea cows the cetaceans usually live in deeper waters and thus direct intake of the plastic is limited <clears throat> but ingestion is most likely by mixture of the debris with desired food the ingested plastic material it get, gets accumulated in their stomach resulting in their blockage of the nutrition process and thus leads to their death the whales die because of the gastrointestinal tract is blocked and it has been reported that entanglement is the main cause of the death in the aquatic mammals followed by ingestion of the plastic materials at least 26 species of the cetaceans have been recognized to ingest the plastic debris and a young male pygmy sperm whale that is cogia breviceps which was found stranded alive in the texas usa died after few days and the necroscopy showed that the first two stomach compartments were completely occluded by the plastic debris <clears throat> so this is this is the effect of the plastic pollution on these very mammals in california two sperm whales that is physester were found off coast with a large amount of fishing gears in their gastrointestinal tract and one was having the rupture in the third compartment of the stomach because of the because of the nylon nylon netting which uh, which was gulped by them accidentally and in brazil the stomach analysis of the blain whale's beaked whale it showed the presence of the large bundle of the plastic thread occupying the main part of the stomach so it is important to know that within the last decade at least seven endangered migratory humpbacked whales they have been spotted to be tangling with the masses of the nylon ropes and debris and it has been reported that the death of an endangered west indian manati in 1985 in florida was the cause of the piece of the plastic that blocked its digestive tract so these are the few examples which which aware us which uh, which warn us that we are we are dumping the plastic waste at an alarming rate in the in the water bodies a considerable number of the pinnipeds that is the large baleen whales pinnipeds uh, large baleen, uh, baleen whales and the dolphins porpoises uh, tooth whales they have been found to be entangled in the fishing gear throughout the nearetic and the ocean waters of the peru and chile marine mammals swim or dive through the mesh and they become entangled they 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 try to cover the long distances from one part of the sea to another and in the way they get entangled with these nets uh, which i told you that that we call it as the ghost fishing the nets which are dumped or which the non functional uh, nets which are either torn they are dumped by these very fishermen in the oceans uh, so as to avoid <clears throat> avoid the uh, the weight excessive weight in their ships they dump them in the ocean and that leads to the death of the many important and the uh, you can say yeah, very important uh, mammals of the ecosystem then uh, the plastics uh, breakdown when we when we see that there are different different 
tendencies of the plastic which which is not easy for to to manage its management practices requires a go through to be looked for that how to manage the plastic waste and it is it is day by day it is killing the environment the plastic pollution it is just from the land we are dumping the uh, these very plastics in the form of the primary plastic and then it turns into the secondary microplastic eaten by the small birds uh, small you can say uh, fishes uh, crustaceans um, you can say annelids even the fishes and the seabirds and then the there is the loss of the life or loss of the biodiversity because of the plastic pollution and this is this is the uh, this is the uh, picture which shows the microplastics uh, reaching to the different uh, living organisms rightly from the fish from the fish to the seabirds and the, from the fish to the aquatic life that is higher aquatic mammals and it leads to the bioaccumulation as well and the studies have suggested that the microplastics have been proven to clog the feeding appendages limit food intake and potentially block or damage the alimentary canal of even the smallest organisms which we see by the microscope such as we do have the cladocerans we do have the copepods and mostly here in this very picture the copepods are shown that you are wherein you are able to see that how plastic beads microplastic beads they are found in these very organisms as well that that is that is leading to the shift in their prey selectivity that is impacting their feeding that is leading to the premature molting and even the lipid accumulation is compromised by this very plastic accumulation inside these very organisms then it has been uh, recently studied that almost the 86% of the species that is reptiles and the sea turtles they ingest they are formed to ingest the plastic and 86% of species uh, are found to be entangled in the plastic or the plastic like substances 23% of the species of the aquatic mammals and 28% of 23% uh, um, of the aquatic mammals ingested these very plastic waste and 28% of these very aquatic mammals they are found to be entangled in these very plastic waste 36% of the species of the seabirds are found to ingest the plastic waste and 16% of these very species were found entangled in these very plastic or plastic like substances these are the pictures of the entanglement that how these very organisms that these very plastic substances that lead to the entanglement of these very um, organisms this is the turtle this entangled it is unable to move it is unable to migrate now and it will lead to its death uh, in this way this is the another example of the entanglement that how these very fishing gears how these very fishing nets how these very you can say um, are non functional fishing nets dumped in the sea they are the cause and the death traps to the aquatic biodiversity no when we when we look in terms of the physiology long term exposure of the polystyrene or the microbeads that has also been demonstrated to reduce the fertility in case of the callanus that is the copepod species and there was no change in the number of the eggs produced however the eggs were smaller and lower chance of the hatching it means what does it mean it means that the whatever whatever the eggs are produced the if the chances of the hatching are less that it means that the population will be decreasing day by day so microplastic increase intake has been found to lengthen the nopless phase of the copepod uh, that is the uh, tegriopus japonicus by reducing the algal prey eating and ingestion of the polystyrene microbeads by the valigar of the marine gastropod that resulted in the slower developmental rates and the premature settling on the seabed and the microplastics also adhere to the gills and skin and they may alter the oxygen intake and ion regulation there is also locomotor impairment 
that leads to the substantial impact on the fish growth and thereby reduction in the population and altered prey predator relationship. And the life stage investigations reveal that the substantial differences between the development phases implying that organisms may be more vulnerable to the microplastic contamination depending on their life stage. And the plastic may also cause exterior morphological, mutagenic and cytogenic changes in tadpoles. And it has also been observed that the microplastics via periphyton have significant effects on the feeding, growth and body condition of the tadpoles of the elites. And Lastly, the further the um, plastics once entered the body and the diet of any organisms, it gets passed on to the other or it reaches to other food webs and result in the more damage through the bioaccumulation. And it also affects the microplastics or the plastic, they also affect the immune system and the reproductive system. By affecting the immune system, they decrease the immune parameters such as hemolymph, they decrease phagocytic activity, they increase lysozyme activity, they uh, rapidly destabilize the uh, lysosomal activity, they increase the degranulation of the primary granules, they have the negative if impact on the gene expression, they decrease the lysosomal membrane stability, they decrease cell viability. And in terms they affect the reproductive system as well. They decrease the oocyte number, diameter and sperm velocity. They affect the reproductive health indices negatively. They impact on fecundity and offspring performance. They decrease sperm ability. They shift in energy allocation from reproduction to structural growth and maintenance. And lastly, to conclude, we may say that plastic pollution is leading cause of the environmental degradation. Ingesting and entanglement of plastic is the leading cause of the death in many aquatic species. Microplastic adherence to the gills and the skin may cause or alter the oxygen intake and ion regulation, thus producing the respiratory stress and consequently altering the behavior. So this was all about what we uh, what we just had gone through that what the plastic pollution is and how plastic pollution impacts the aquatic fauna. So I think that is all for today. And I end uh, this very presentation with the fact that in 2050, more plastic will be in the oceans than the fish if we are unable to stop the usage of the plastic or we are unable to clean our environment in terms of gathering the plastic from the from the uh, from, from the earth's uh, surface and the water as well uh, thank you thank you for your patience hearing and thank you for bearing me for almost one an hour thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Bhaktiar. That was such a wonderful presentation. And I was so much engrossed in the slides and the pictures of the animals. Like, I was also not blinking my eyes. So since we are running uh, very much short of time and uh, our next speaker is waiting for long, so I will not start any question answers. Sorry, viewers, but uh, Dr. Bhaktiar, just see the chat box. You will know what it is. It is flooded with the, with the compliments to you. Thank it you, thank flooded. you very much. Thank you for all the appreciation and thank you very much. Thank you, the organizing committee. So it's, it's time and, to, uh, and best of luck to all the delegates and uh, for this you. very uh, fruitful event. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhaktia. So it's time to formally thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bhaktia, for an enlightening and entertaining presentation on plastic pollution and its impact on aquatic fauna. Plastic is the biggest curse of this century. You made us understand in so many ways. Slides were so beautiful, self-explanatory, pictures of the animals were very pretty. Literally, my heart beat when I saw the pictures of fish in dying of plastic pollution. You correctly said that it's high time for the humans to stop dumping the plastic waste in the oceans. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation, and I'm sure you'll be with us in our next future events as well. Please accept our sincere thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.
So now it's time for our 19th keynote address, which is to be delivered by Dr. Shankar Subramanian Ayer. Uh, Dr. Subramanian Ayer, I'm so sorry we kept you waiting. Please accept our apologies. Uh, we could not help, uh, but uh, I can just say uh, we are so sorry for kept you waiting for so long. Um, so I would uh, start with the introduction of Dr. Subramanian Ayer. Dr. Subramaniam Ayer is an astute and result-oriented engineer, management and finance professional with over three decades of extensive techno-commercial experience in sales, marketing, business development and CRM with profit accountability in various sectors like engineering, construction, mining, projects, finance and education. Lately, he has been developing a program and a course curriculum, quality assurance for business engineering and vocational courses, and helping delivering them, getting the same approval from the sponsors, like Dubai Municipality, Mohammed bin Rashid Housing Establishment, Dubai Electrical and Water Authority, Dubai Road Transport Authority, Dubai Aluminium, Dubai Petroleum and Gas and Academicians like Health and Safety, Surveying inspections, draftsmanship research, worked as an internal verifier and external reviewer for QAD and TVET approvals, worked with NQA and MOE on education framework development. His research areas include emerging technologies like blockchain in education, data analysis, big data artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and augmented reality. He is currently working with the Westwood University College and Education Hub as a senior faculty and business development manager for institutional business. His areas of interest are marketing, operations, health, safety, strategic management, research and development, emerging technology, business analytics, business sustainability, resilience and education management. Dr. Ayer, you are very welcome to the country. Now I would request Dr. Ayer to start with his keynote address. So the stage is all yours. Sir, please unmute yourself first. Sir, we cannot hear you. Yeah. Sir, kindly try to yeah. unmute yourself. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Very well. Yeah. So, uh... I will uh, thank you for the ample introduction. <laughs> it's a lengthy one. And uh, yeah. of course, uh, the other uh, participants have been uh, giving us a, a wonderful time. So I'll start with my presentation. So I'll just share mine. So. So can you see uh, my uh, screen now? Hello? Uh, yes, sir, we can. Yeah. So basically, uh, coming down to the, I think this is one of the last now. So I'll just uh, go through the uh, impact and panacea of uh, environmental pollution, the past, present and future. So a lot has been said about uh, the pollution ingredients and the components. <clears throat> So basically, I think uh, the main uh, solution to all this is uh, uh, the awareness part because we are not aware of what we are doing. So this is happening. So we look at the next, what I think is the universe, the earth, everything are organisms. If we realize this, we will not do the damage we are already doing to each and every cycle. We are distorting the uh, circular cycles the natural cycles and uh, that's the saddest part of that and because we are not aware of the things and the holistic view is being one with them so we need to be one with nature with the universe so if you are not then we are going to have problems and these are all the manifested problems of this so i'm just giving it a spiritual holistic twist and of course i believe in science i believe in research so i'll see how to connect it now so most seers can see this and it was taught in the old Gurukul system. So it was very much taught in our old uh, Gurukul system where we have told how the nature is 
what is creating us we belong to the nature and we go back to the nature so most of us have gone away from this and that's the saddest part and that's why we are spoiling the nature the universe and so on so if we keep our environment dirty it's going to affect our conscious and our our very being so i'm very thankful for the uh, pm modi's swachh bharat abhiyan so it's clearly a indication that this is what needs to be done at the uh, lowest level so if you able to keep ourselves clean our environmental clean and basically it has to do with the cleanliness within in our inner self so it will all show our conscious levels will go high the awareness will spread and we will stop doing damage to nature <clears throat> so coming back to i just completed that part so now i'm going into the research area which i very much would like to link it to so uh, i believe in circular uh, economies so my research has been done on this uh, one of and i believe the awareness can be spread only at the education level by education so in the school level at at the home level if each of us is taught that we are wasting water we should not waste paper we do not uh, we should not spoil the nature we should be one with nature so i am just giving it a emotional angle so from the linear sustainability economy which all of them we lecture ourselves we need to go to the circular economy uh, ce model so how the education sector can contribute to the solution of this is very much to be seen so as a educator i keep telling my children the people around me the students the industrial uh, people so only now recently everyone is concerned about uh, the environment and the other factors of it but this has been amply seen the effect has been long run it's been going on for centuries and we are uh, having a problem so if you look at the uh, basic pillars the circular economy has primarily three pillars as i have shown here so design out waste and pollution keep materials and uh, products in the in use regenerate natural uh, systems so this is all to be triggered by innovations and in r&d so i'm looking at all this from the uh, management point of view from organizations from education point of view so all this had come to to be aligned for the uh nature and for mankind to be one so like in the last presentation we have seen how the uh the fish how we are spoiling the sea how we are following the uh, spoiling the various beings on this earth the fishes the birds and so on so obviously we are spoiling ourselves because that's the same fish we eat and that's the same Uh, containers we use in the micro ovens which is going to lead to cancer things and so on so uh, there are unlimited uh, diseases which we are uh, going to face in the future so all this can be spread only by awareness and only the education can spread this so the stress should be on the education we should amply invest in this okay so i have narrowed down to the education sector in uae because i happen to stay here but it's very much apply applicable to any of us anywhere in the world so what we need to do is if i start at the curriculum design at the schools at the higher education levels we can teach the students how nature is one we need to look at spreading the awareness what we are doing to nature and how we can reverse it and then uh, by actually doing it on the campus the campus applications the students should can be easily able to see how we are conserving uh, uh, the lights how we are using solar how we are using uh, uh, how we are saving the water and we can also inbuild a lot of uh, other applications into the campus where people can see actually the students can see and learn that uh, paperless systems they look at uh, don't use plastics or how to segregate the the waste at the first level so it can be properly re recycled and so on and all this has to be uh, combined with the research development innovation and collaboration with the industry so 
and obviously the uh, technology has got a big part to play in this emerging technologies will help us uh, get through this uh, phase and obviously the people involvement that is right from the children the students the learners the uh, teachers everyone should be part of it in building this awareness otherwise we are going nowhere so as was as was already said 2040 2050 is soon upon us and we will be all probably merged in plastic like how the birds and fishes are so the uh, at uh, student level what we can do and at the at the industry point of view the curriculum needs to be continuous updated to match the industrial and societal needs to accommodate new innovations in the circular economy so this is what we need to build new leaders the new startups the new educators the new students the new learners and the fresh entrepreneurs so they can go into the industry and start adopting this kind of circular design and uh, and stop the uh, spread of pollution and so on so we have seen a lot of campuses in ua especially the masdar and some of these Uh, our uh, evoke uh, uh, models for the uh, ce kind of uh, education so ue campus can be live examples of applying ce in electrification using renewable energy using leds low uh, consumer lamps consumption lamps recycling the water reduce waste we also uh, ready made uh, examples of green buildings green energy uh, societies we are having ample in the ue the ue government is uh, spreading this awareness and there are a lot of investments we are coming into this which i i uh, encourage all the entrepreneurs and all the countries and all the leaders to go into taking this uh, stand so this gives the learners the feel of the uh, the circular economy in the real conditions and the universities can collaborate in the industries to showcase this gadgets and applications of the campus the UAE education sector must invest in R&D and collaborate with the local global industries to take on CE projects. So we have the big techs, we have a lot of big uh, people uh, like Bill Gates Foundation and other NGOs who are ready to invest in this kind of projects. So I encourage the education universities and the colleges, even at the school level, to go into this so because I've seen in some NGOs been taught teaching children how to save uh, water. and i have seen a live example of those children going home and actually physically stopping the parents from wasting water uh, like uh, we someone is shaving and the the, the the child goes and puts off the tap saying that when he require the water you use it and things like that so it gets a emotional involvement of the people the families into this kind of awareness so these collaborations will be the future for the uae to lead the way to uh circular economy and to other middle east countries the ue government can announce policies to support these initiatives and collaborations so next is the uh, emerging technologies and how they can be used so we have seen all through blockchains robotics machine learning cloud computing virtual reality all these projects can be used to spread this awareness and also uh teach live examples of how to uh innovate and how to do uh save nature and the environment so we're looking at the awareness the technology is part of it the people can be trained to spread this awareness and there should be rewards to augment this uh awareness so that's what uh, we call it as the eccentric and the incentive rewards to motivate them so uh, to also encourage all these uh, features we can have a circular economy uh, index which can be monitored so it can be on the apps it can be on uh, computers it can be at the campuses so each and every initiative can be measured and tracked and uh, and we encouraged and the, uh, the people who are lacking began can be taught and trained retrained on this so the ce index can support the tracking of the projects and measure the progress in ce by the organization and even individuals so we can have smart uh, smartphones individually uh, measuring what kind of contribution an individual is giving to the circular economy 
so from a management point of view so it this involves a lot of change at all levels so i have uh, used the adgar uh, change management theory to advocate this so awareness of the ce should be spread at individual level community level organization level at industry level and collaborations and the desire is what we see so we see what is happening what is the kind of disasters humanity is going and how it's going to backtrack back to us like spread of cancer and probably land up in more kind of diseases so this could encourage people for the desire to go for the circular economy so it should be communicated properly the risk involved should be discussed at all all forums the benefits should be shown and this program should be uh, uh, should have to build momentum and we can address the fears the knowledge as i said can be awareness train training technology project management shared learnings time frame all this can be knowledge inculcated to the society and the individuals and by the organizations ability to implement there is formulate framework strategy training transparency rework the processes need and reinforcement so tracking and uh, doing this uh, using the various apps i mentioned we can have the circular economy index at the individual at organization at community levels and then there should be a positive feedback continuous improvement can happen so the whole cycle is completed we go back to the awareness so the continuous loop measurement index feedback fine tuning innovations can all be linked back to the awareness level so this is the contribution of this research so i added the innovation part to the adgar change management system so if i connect it to the sdg the sustainable development goals of the un so we'll see each of them has been answered here and how they can be converted to a ce basically so first thing is how the the education should spread to all each and every person so eradicate poverty by education which ue education sector can contribute make learners employable and as entrepreneurs so each and every sdp has been connected so train people on well being and health and uh, spread awareness and run research projects standardized common circular economic curriculum can be inbuilt designed so uh, at the education level right from the schools then generate equality exemplary examples at the ue education sector organizations awareness and experimental learning at the campus implement projects on campus and collaborate with the industry design curriculum for these projects ue education can develop research encourage innovativeness in uh, renewable energy tie up with the industry to partner more projects ue education is recognized as economic contributor as education hub for the middle east and the many collaborations and industries leading the way forward so you see each and every uh, sdp has been connected okay so this is the example of that and then the sdps of the un can be extended to the c initiatives objective of suggesting a c initiative to be implemented by the ue education sector has been met the main contribution has been the management change perspective used in encouraging the successful implementation of the c initiatives and the contribution has been the innovation added to the adgar model so this was the conclusion so i am open to questions thank you very much so uh, hello mic check mic check yes ma'am we can hear you okay any questions uh, tarif akbar has raised the hand please uh, unmute him okay. i just open the chat i i just want to see the chat So very nice and informative session. There are so many compliments for you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? I would like to answer yeah, them. Yeah, that's that's what I am trying to look at. Any questions? I don't think so. Any questions? So, 
uh, now it's time to formally thank Dr. Ayer. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, Dr. Ayer, for the stirring speech you gave us. Everyone present at the occasion was not only in the awe of your knowledge, but also greatly impressed by your presenting style. It's appearing as if we are talking to each other. It was a great pleasure to listen to your wise words and learn so much out of it. I take this opportunity to thank you on the behalf of our entire organizing committee and delegates who are captivated by talk. You spoke on how the education sector can contribute to the solution of environmental pollution panacea. So now we come to the end of the third day, uh, fourth day. Thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. I say that one a lot. Thank you expresses extreme gratitude, humility, understanding. Very well said by Alice Walker. With this, we come to the end of the fourth day of ISTTP2. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all the speakers who are very learned and knowledgeable scientists of their field. And they, spared, they, they have spared their valuable time to be with us here in this training program. I would like to tell all the speakers that we, the organizers, and all the participants are very happy and delighted to have you here with us and hope you all had a wonderful time too, like we had with us. Thank you so, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. The feedback link has been circulated in the chat box. Do fill it because your critical views are very, very important for us to improve on the training part. Now, this is Dr. Mamta Sharma, Organizing Secretary of ISTTP2, along with my team, Dr. Ravi Khan Sharma, Muskan Data. We are signing off from the campus of RLC Alwar, and we will see you tomorrow again, and not tomorrow. Tomorrow is our home assignment day. The assignment will be posted in the WhatsApp groups and uh, in the Telegram group, and you can send your responses to envtoxicall at the rate gmail.com. I will see you back on Monday at 11 a.m. sharp Indian Standard Time with the full bucket, new bucket of knowledge. So stay with us, stay tuned. Thank you so much and have a great rest of the day ahead. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.